you know, that's a good crime to have a law against. It sure but, is. like, death. I guess it can cause death. It's kind of fair. Burnishing weapons means, like, having it in your hand, right? And swinging it about. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. in, a, in a drunken stupor, swinging around a, a short sword might uh, cause unwanted harm. Tizio, are you in the channel? He looks like he's getting in there here now. He just signed in, so... Okay, back. Somehow I missed the one with the jester. Where is it? You know, I'd have to pull it up exactly, but I know I read it. That's why I laughed at it. You know what it was? I apologize. It's not... The, this is the simplified version of it. There, There is a more in-depth thing just outlining how intertwined the rules are in the city that there are actual rules such as heckling a jester in the street could be punishable by two i think it's a, a 10 day of where you as the person who committed the crime would have to walk through the streets while people from the jester guild heckled you in return that's pretty <laughs> funny yeah um there there are fines for if a baker does not bake a loaf of bread in the shape of a loaf of bread, they can be fined uh, up to a certain number of gold pieces. They could have their membership from the baker's guild removed. Crazy things like that. There's just a guild for everything, isn't there? There is. There is a large number of guilds in Waterdeep. Where's that adventuring guild? <laughs> there is no direct guild for adventuring however let's see if i can remember correctly there is about 25 to 30 various guilds of different things i mean you have everything from jewelers to laundry to street laborers to sewer cleaners apothecaries it, it's quite an immersive uh, city well we were gonna quit and become blacksmiths or something right <laughs> i mean you can it's, it could be possible could pay out. City of the Dead isn't ominous. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> not, not unless you had to go there. We are just waiting for one to join. I see him. <clears throat> Let me send him another message. So are the stars on the map, map like places... So that stars like... on the map are noticeable. Um, I don't have that, that same map pulled up in front of me to look at, but um, those are probably noticeable. Um, there, Something there are like large the... living, uh, not living, but there are large statues of uh, various entities that are known throughout the city. Um, you oh. might, uh, let's see here, the Temple of Beauty, uh, House of Wonder. These are various, um, you know, churches in the city. Oh, cool. That's actually the DM map I'm looking at. Let me pull up your guys' map. So let's see. Uh, the Sword Maiden is, I believe, an inn. The God Catcher, I believe, is another inn. Yeah, the Great Drunkard. The Lady Dreaming. But um, <clears throat> for, for this first session here, you guys won't be traversing the city itself too much. Um, just because the request from um, Barnabas takes you guys outside of the city surprisingly on a quick little detour to investigate some issues going on oh he is here hey can you hear me can you guys hear me yep now we can Okay, no, I was, I'm was. i trying to figure out my volume stuff here. It's the first time I ever use voice on this thing. Not a problem. Um, if you can follow suit when you get a moment uh, on your Roll20 to go to the Settings tab and change your game name to your character's name, and if you can throw your AC in there, that would be amazing. Uh, <coughs> And 
guys let me know how my volume is and everything like that too so if it's too low or you need me to talk louder let me know It's you're good to me. You're good with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the volume's good for me. Excellent. I always forget that nature is an intelligence skill. It sure is. And I will do my best to try to make uh, pretty decent skill checks based on situation. You might even need one here in this this first scenario. But once I get the thumbs up from everybody, I guess we can start. I'm ready. My thumb is up. Oh, You're good to go. Same. Third. All right. So, as we start off here in Waterdeep, each of you have come here for your own various reasons. Um, unknown to each other at the current moment. However, sorry about that. However, um, you have all noticed that posted up around the city on different um, billboards throughout, you, you, uh, you can see that there are various um, requests uh, for help. There are different um, brochures for different temples and, and various wanted posters of criminals and the like. Um, you all happened to notice throughout the different wards of the city, wherever you were at the time, that there was one poster in particular, a help wanted poster from the, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, from a one Barnabas Blastwind, who happens to be working for the, um, let me pull it up here, yes, from the, do -do -do -do, yep, the Order of the Magistrates and Protectors which um, for Tizio, you would know that that is a guild of wizards and witches who focus uh, on the advancement of arcane arts and their overarching goal is to help protect those in the city of Waterdeep in times of trouble. Um, you would also know that most people, when they enter into the city, and Talum, you would notice this as well, that once you had made it known that you were a practicer of the arcane arts, you would probably be requested to register yourself with the Watchful Order, Magistrates and Protectors. Um, that way, in a time of need, if you were choosing to stay in Waterdeep for any extended duration, that you could be called on in times of strife. And so here is where we begin. Each of you uh, on this day, posted on this wanted poster, head over down to the south gate of Waterdeep to meet with Barnabas and to assist him in whatever they were requesting. And so we will throw you over here onto this map. Let me know if everyone can see it. I'm still at the title screen. Okay, it should drag you over. There we go. Oh, perfect. My mistake. Okay, so this is the overall map, uh, which you all have a copy to for the city of Waterdeep. Um, you guys will be kind of represented by this red dot here. And for the time being, you guys will have been moved over to the south gate, which it's not letting me move it. Cool. Anyway, so you guys will be moving down towards the south gate located down here. Zoom in a little bit, see if I can drag it. There it goes. Upon arriving at the gate, you see before you... Hey! <laughs> you see before you a, a bit of a hunched man wearing these long, dark, purple robes. And, uh... Let me see if I can pull him up for you. He, he has very wavy blonde hair and uh, it's full full face here we're talking about 
curvy mustache, thick grown blonde beard, uh, wears a very large gold medallion with a, with a symbol on it that you all can't recognize right away, uh, and he seems to be walking next to an assistant, and he, he looks about each of you and he says, Well, thank you, thank you for coming. It's been a, a bit of a trying time for us here in Waterdeep, and we could definitely use some assistance. My name is Barnabas Blastwind. I am a mage within the Order of, the, of Magistrates and Protectors here within the city of Waterdeep. I placed out this wanted poster a few days ago seeking some assistance as we are a little short-handed right now, especially with the restore, restoration efforts of various people within the city. Uh, to the outlying towns. Um, if anyone who's proficient in history wants to make a history check, go ahead. Ooh, history good. buffs in the chat. Nice, look at that. <laughs> Get some. Um, you guys would know that prior to your journey across the lands coming to the city of Waterdeep, especially since none of you are from this local area directly, is that not but a year and a half ago, <clears throat> a group known as the Cult of the Dragon had tore its way across the Sword Coast, causing a lot of mayhem and destruction in their attempt to resurrect a very evil deity known as Tiamat. Thankfully, a party of adventurers happened to thwart their plans, but it didn't come out come without a price. Uh, many of the nearby cities, to include Neverwinter, Daggerford, and uh, a lot of other areas along the coast of the Sword Coast, um, have been in desperate need of raw materials and reconstruction efforts. And so the Order of Magistrates and Protectors has been very busy helping in those in those fronts so as barnabas is standing there looking at the group of you um he you watch as he points over to his assistant and you see his assistant is a, a taller human male um standing maybe about six feet tall compared to barnabas who is only about maybe five 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 six and he's just wearing a simple simple black cloak with some some green undergarments you can see there's there's a bit of a a chainmail shirt hanging out from the sides and he pulls out a quill and a piece of parchment and he says mm, please please state your name so that we can register you as joining in this effort with the order of magistrates and protectors and so that upon completion of this quest you would be rewarded thusly so if everyone wants to take a moment to just kind of um, explain what their character looks like, what their first or last name, if you prefer, is, and we'll go around. Uh, sure. I'm uh, Talum Jover, or Joel, J I don't know how to pronounce my last name. I forget. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out a while ago in DMs, and then I forgot. But anyway, uh, I'm a human, uh, kind of dirty... Uh, brown hair, long robes. That's about it. All right, you watch as he makes a note. Uh, you'll see a, uh, a fairly average-sized halfling, brown hair, uh, brown eyes. Nothing too out of the ordinary, but you will notice he is bouncing on the the palms of his feet uh, looking around trying to make eye contact with all of you um, and then you'll hear him cry out to the uh, the assistant oh, I'm Perry Ironhill at your service and I am uh, Tizio the Ferro uh, he's a human uh, male uh, He's kind of wearing uh, like your normal adventurer's uh, uh, armor, uh, like the like their layered armor. Um, nothing more earthly tones to it. Uh, excuse me, it's more earthly tones to his uh, um, 
what he's wearing, uh, something that can kind of blend in, uh, you know, with a, with a normal commoner uh, that's probably or a normal adventurer that's just passing by, nothing flashy or anything like that. Um, all right. Introducing himself as Eldane, you see a blue skinned, roughly humanoid looking figure with white highlights throughout himself. Sort of fish like frills on either arm and wearing robes of red towards the bottom, cut in sort of like almost a kilt or dress like fashion, with a brown robe covering half of his chest, leaving the remainder exposed. There's a mane of blue hair tied loosely behind his head into long dreadlocks, and sort of casting his eyes around and everything, much like a tourist. Uh, I uh, choose myself as uh, Kilarian. Um, I'm a Silver Heritage Dragonborn, wearing uh, some chainmail armor, gold eyes, pretty tall, about six and a half feet, and uh, just walk around with a sword and a shield strapped to my back. Excellent, excellent. Well, now that we all have your names here, please make sure to visit the Order of Magistrates and Protectors upon completion of your mission to receive your predetermined sum of five dragons each. Now, might I remind each of you that this is completely voluntary, none of you are being forced to be here, and we all greatly appreciate your services to Waterdeep. With that, there may be some risk of harm, bodily injury, or loss of life should you partake this quest. And with that in mind, I will now pass it over to my assistant who will give you a rundown on the current situation. You see the other taller gentleman to his right uh, just kind of cough a little bit and mumble. <coughs> um, hello, hello everyone. Um, we have been having reports that some of the trade goods from Daggerford to the southern gate of Waterdeep have been mm, um, missing for a couple days now. Uh, the, the merchants themselves, they've, they've been arriving, but then they've been saying that uh, their carts have been ransacked by various terrible monsters that seem to be um, bothering them on, on the, the way uh, along the southern trail of the Trades Way. Um, we, we ask that you um, head out south of the town and uh, try to investigate the last known whereabouts of the uh, most recent encounter and if you are able to recover said items that have been lost and possibly slay or remove the um, in incidents that have been uh, hi hindering the merchants that that would be much appreciated thank you what what was the what were they attacked by well, um, that, that, that's the... Hmm, he, he scratches his head a little bit and he kind of looks around. You get the kind of sense that he, he shuffles around a bit. He's not, not too big on talking. He's used to Barnabas talking most of it. <clears throat> um, and Barnabas is just kind of standing there with a little huff and, and impatient. But um, uh, his, his assistant uh, looks back over and says, Well, um, it, it, it's the strangest thing, really. And you see as he starts flicking through his notes, it... There, there have been several different carts that have been uh, reported with um, missing or stolen goods, and e each account of the incident has resulted in a uh, different monster that has been um, terrorizing the group. And, and from the last report that we had from the Baker's Guild was that their, their last supply of flour that's come through the South Gate um, was completely um, ransacked by, by a large beast uh, running on all fours, charging with a, with a monstrous howl. And it, it, the, the time before that, when, when the Jewelers Guild was passing along, um, they said that it was a, a feline cat with uh, walking on two legs. and. And it, it just it just doesn't make sense. Nothing's lining up. It doesn't seem to be the the same creature that has been um, attacking each of these these um, townsfolk as they've been traveling along the trades way. Um, uh, we don't know if there's any kind of consortment or higher works at power, but we definitely need you to 
take a look and, and see what, what is the root of this problem. And what's the priority? Recovering the lost items or slaying the monsters? Uh, Barnab Barnabas chimes in at this point and says, Priority of the merchandise is always going to be the number one uh, point of reference here for the merchants and various trades that are going on. The, the loss of these, <clears throat> uh, these material components have been of a, a great nuisance to us, especially because we are in desperate need of this, these supplies to help with the restoration efforts. So if you are capable of returning these supplies intact in the best of their ability, that would be a priority, number one. Number two, finding some method of deterring these creatures, these beasts, whatever they may be, or putting an end to it altogether would be a great help. Uh, we don't currently have the armed forces to be patrolling the southern trade routes, and so if we can fix that, it would be much appreciated. Just, uh, <clears throat> where, where are the, the merchants that were attacked? Are there any still alive? You said there were, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, all the merchants seem to have come back unharmed. It's just that all of their... Um, all of their, their carts and everything, all of their supplies were left abandoned in fear for their lives. The, the members who were... Uh, going from Daggerfort to the southern gate of Waterdeep um, when they were attacked by these creatures then they were just leaving the carts and running on foot um, obviously it's it's about a two day two to three days journey from here to Daggerfort itself however they were about halfway here when these monsters uh, attacked so there are various eyewitness reports that we have collected and he kind of points over to his assistant who's just kind of holding the the book open <clears throat> and as my assistant had said each report has been different each each cart each group of merchants who have traveled along this route and have been ransacked by these creatures report a different type of creature attacking them all in the general vicinity about a day and a half two days ride south of the uh, tradeway from the south gate. Um, there is, to our best knowledge, a large patch of forest about that distance away. It might be possible that wherever these creatures reside, it might be there. Uh, uh, yes, excuse me, question. Yes. You said that all the merchants escaped with their lives. Did they escape, or were they allowed to leave? Each of these merchants escaped with their lives from whatever creature was attacking them. They've all made it safely back to Waterdeep. That is not the issue here. No, To our best knowledge, no lives were lost in these incidents, and that is what's becoming most peculiar to us, because according to these descriptions, multiple creatures are attacking these, these merchants, and based on some of their accounts and us taking time to investigate here within our archives, these, these are typically creatures that are out for blood, out for some way to feed themselves. But it doesn't make sense how each and every one of these merchants, and there have been several that have all seemed to come back unharmed, not a scratch on them. However, all their merchantile was lost. Has so, there been any pattern at all to the target, the what's missing, or what guild's being attacked. After going through inventories from all the various merchants that have been transporting supplies from Daggerford to here, there hasn't been a consistent pattern. We've we've had bakers lose their supplies. We've had jewelers lose their supplies. We've had basic smooth cut stones uh, that the the order of cobblers and, and, and stone weavers use. We've had various shipping materials lost. We've had um, crates of candles and candelabras and, and gas lanterns that have gone missing. All from various different guilds throughout the city, different merchants who 
usually use this trade route as a way to sell their wares from the various cities and none of them have been lining up to any particular pattern. It's it's quite confusing. I think it's uh, safe to say that uh, something is uh, controlling these beasts. I mean, I've not met an animal yet that uh, has any interest in candelabras. <laughs> Barnabas chuckles in with you at this as well and he says you are a sharp one you are um, I, I would most certainly agree with you that there seems to be something afoot here someone or something is controlling these other various beasts it, it makes no sense to us that they would work together in such a way especially to just steal merchandise well, there's lots of people that can talk to animals and they can be very uh they can listen quite well yes yeah, so let's go f let's go find these animals that play fetch <laughs> okay if i if we find them i i can maybe talk to them wonderful and to aid you in the search since we know that it's going to be a bit of a, a trek we're not going to ask you to walk on foot the order of mages mages and protectors are willing to uh give each of you a standard riding horse to help you aid on this journey uh that should expedite some travel and um <clears throat> the the assistant nods at this point he, he, he watches he kind of counts one two three four and then he he ushers you guys over towards um a nearby stable it's only maybe about a five minute walk away and there in the stable you see already prepped and ready to go for you guys a horse and saddle set up for each of you ready to go I'm gonna make my way over to a horse at random <clears throat> sure and, and you all just yeah go ahead sort of just had its muzzle and you would have rubbed down Make an animal handling check. Okay, okay, not bad. Um, yeah, you, you notice that um, it, it, he's a little nervous for it at, at first, um, just because it, it seems to have been a lot of commotion going on, especially with all of them getting prepped and ready. But um, he, he seems to be very uh, welcoming to your presence, and, and you get the sense that you found one that's uh, very compatible with you. I'm going to cast Speak with Animals. Go ahead. <clears throat> what do you say uh, to your horse? The kindly gentleman here say we are going to take you out for a ride. Is, is that okay? He watches the horse, um, he gently kind of trots one of his hooves uh, and nuzzles in your direction and he responds, it, it's, it's been a little busy here, um, so it would be nice to get out and get some fresh air. Yes, it is very strange in these big places, it would be nice to get out again. I haven't been able to I'll run in quite some time. Up. Perfect. So um, o over the next 10, 15 minutes or so, each of you find yourselves a, a horse and, and get familiar with it and, and you um, set, set up any of the gear that you need to bring for the journey. Is there anything else that you guys um, need to do or want to do to prepare prior to you guys heading out? Uh, any idea uh, how long the ride is going to be? Uh, according to Barnabas, um, he had said, <clears throat> excuse me, um, from reports that have been given from all the merchants, um, it, they, the total travel time between the southern gate of Waterdeep to Daggerford is about two to three days journey on horseback, but it wasn't until about a day and a half out from Waterdeep itself that there was a that's where all of the incidents seem to have happened or somewhere around that trail. So you're, you're looking at maybe about a day to a day and a half's worth of travel before you hit the, the forest and the stretch of trail of the tradesway that the incidents have been happening. Okay. I'm gonna lean over to sort of look down at my horse, 
do you uh, have a name? Uh, yes, uh, my my. They they gave us all various names throughout throughout our days, but I'm so glad you asked. My my name is Juniper. Juniper, that is a good name. Thank you. What's yours? Elden. I've never seen anyone like you before. Where do you come from? Oh, I come from a, a little island further north from here. Well, maybe if I'm ever free of these bonds, you should take me there. Is it nice? It is very nice. Uh, it was very nice. But, uh, well, I haven't been there in a little while. He, he he looks at you a little confused, not totally understanding what you mean by if it was nice, how could it not be still nice? <clears throat> but it, you're able to convey to him as much as you're willing to, so that you guys come to an understanding. And and he seems to feel a little closer to you. Okay, so you have a plus one to your AC. Does that put you at nineteen? Or is it uh, I'm playing it to my Warhammer, so it'll be plus one to my. Uh... It'd be like a plus one Warhammer. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I see it at the end. Thank you for that. Yep. Okay. Is there... Um, I'd like to uh, go up to Barnabas, if I may. And... Uh... Uh, we're, we're, we're outside, correct? If yes, you are. Yes, you, you, there, okay. was, there was a stables uh, not too far away. The assistant had to take... The, walked you guys over so that you guys could get geared up, but Barnabas is still there waiting for you guys as you leave the uh, gate. So, and he looks over and he goes, and he goes, Tizio, right? Ah, yeah, that's correct, Barnabas. Listen, listen here. As you can see, we're we're all pretty, pretty fine strapping young lads. And uh, as you can look around, and I'm going to put my arm around him, uh, around his shoulder, that is. All right. And uh, as, as you can tell, you know, no, no one's really lining up for this whatsoever. Um, you know, and it seems like no one's been successful. You know, it's it's probably because of the pay. It's not worth it. Uh, you know, why don't why don't you pay a little bit more? Let's say eight marks a piece, and you know, if we don't come back then we, we don't come back you know you keep your money if if not we hey you pay up and uh, you get all your goods back make a persuasion check at disadvantage oh yep you can hear me I thought I muted myself oh my <laughs> god <laughs> all right Nice roll. Okay, <clears throat> so you're you're a little bit taller than Barnabas, and as you go to reach your arm around him, you know he he stays motionless at first, and he he listens to you completely, and then you watch as he just gingerly grabs you by the cuff and takes your arm off of him, and he says. I appreciate the effort, lad. And you're right. It is a difficult task, and we have been shorthanded. And in times of need, it's totally understandable to have to fork out a little bit more coin. If you all can successfully report back that you have cleared that path of any monsters and return this merchandise that's been missing, you can have your eight dragons apiece. But don't ever touch me again. <laughs> uh, that's the Barnabas I know and love. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm going to lean over towards Perry's horse and just say, my uh, friend is uh, struggling. Can you uh, lower yourself a little bit for him? Make another just... animal handling check. At advantage this time because you've been talking with yours for a while. You're gonna, you're gonna see Perry just looking around like I'm, I'm used to a I'm used to a pony. Uh, <laughs> a stool somewhere maybe. <laughs> um, Perry, you watch as El Eldane, um, 
he 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 just starts speaking in a weird language to you and it, just, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense at first you just hear a lot of <laughs> and and you just watch as this this horse just gently gets down on all fours to make it easier for you to hop on <laughs> he's gonna look over did you do that that's, I, uh, that's amazing yes i used to help the uh children in my tribe uh, mount up on various things as well so, oh. uh, it is it is strange to see a uh, a little child like you on a dangerous mission like this <laughs> yes yeah, i agree i don't know why they even need me here it is okay i am sure we will be able to hide behind the uh big lizard in metal uh, I can take care of myself. Don't you worry. Okay. And, and Eldin, you you look at Perry, and I mean, even though he's really small, and and I don't know if Eldin's ever seen any halflings. I don't think there are any in his tribe. Um, he's decked out in armor right now. Like he's wearing what you normally see normal people outside of your town since you've gotten to Waterdeep, and it's a little off-putting for you because it's all metal. And it's all very shiny, and it, it all looks very well made. Um, but he looks like he could, like a small cannonball, ready to charge into a fight. <laughs> Eldane is very much a tourist, and just sort of half confused and half trying to pretend he knows what's going on. All right. So, um, does anyone else have anything they want to do or prepare before you guys head out? Uh, quick question. Uh, am I able to go to a shop and just buy a shield before we leave? Is that something I should have just done beforehand? <laughs> um, I, I, I wasn't sure, so anything that I, I, I wasn't going to buy anything until we started is all. No, I understand. Um, was it part of your starting equipment, or are you trying to buy this with the gold that you started with? Uh, buying with the gold. Okay. Uh, I believe off the top of my head that a standard shield is uh, two gold pieces. Let me double check. So it uh, looks like it's ten. Is it ten? That might be right. According to my handy dandy Google search. According to D and D Beyond, it weighs six pounds and, and it costs ten gold. Then that, that yeah, ten gold. gold. Yep. Okay, so um. Yeah, so you, you are able to walk in. Um, there There is a small mm, leather working shop that you are able to find. Actually, you know what? Make, roll an investigation check for me. Just to see how quickly you can find this nearby shop. Okay, so <laughs> for a total of seven. Yeah, it, I mean... You're right, Perry. Absolutely. If you want, or how do you want to do this? Do you, have you wanted to buy it? Because you had days before the start of this mission, so if you knew you were going to buy a shield, you would have had the time to find a shield and pay for it if you wanted to pay the 10. Yeah, that, that's just what I wasn't I wasn't sure of because I didn't start with it. I wasn't sure if it was just something we had to wait until the start of the game to do it or, or not. No, 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 it's fine. Yeah, I so probably should have asked beforehand. It's all good. So yeah, so we'll, we'll say you, you had the shield in hand already. Otherwise, because then you're in time from searching for this because it would take gotcha. you a while and you said <laughs> uh, you said is, 10 gold yes it is 10 gold for a standard shield uh, while okay. you're wearing it you get a plus 2 to your AC <clears throat> excuse me so is everybody ready to leave yes 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 perfect okay so as you all begin this trek outside of the southern gate of Waterdeep. We will go ahead and pull you over here to the world map. Let me know when you guys can see it. We can. Okay. So currently the city of Waterdeep is located right here. You guys were told that the merchandise from Daggerford, which is directly south along the tradeway, which is that red dotted line, that is the route that 
most merchants are using when they're transporting their goods into the city for trade, for sell, for setting up shop, whatever have you. It was somewhere around this part here, about midway between Daggerford and Waterdeep, that these reports have been coming in of strange beasts and creatures. And as you start making your way out, right now it's about, it's, it's still early morning, it's maybe about 10, 30, 11 or so. Uh, you guys got a pretty good start on the day. And I, at this point, I guess I want to know a marching order and how fast you guys are going to be traveling. On horseback, at a normal pace, you can make about 24 miles in a day. Perry would definitely be uh, just holding on for dear life on this horse, uh, <laughs> trotting ahead of everybody. everybody. Um, I should probably run or ride near the front as well. I'd make sure to be nice and surrounded by people. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I'd I'd probably be towards the uh, middle-ish area. All right, so Talon and Tizio. I'll middle. go to the back then. And then who's in the back? Me, Eldane. Eldane, I right, gotcha. Sorry. Gotta get used to everyone's voices. And then we got uh, Calarian up in the front. Perfect. What a strategic marching order. So. Second question, how fast are you guys traveling? You guys can, you guys know that on horseback at a normal pace, especially given the information Barnabas handed you, it could take about a day, day and a half before you actually make it over there. Um, if you guys push a little harder, you can probably make it there around nightfall. Um, but you guys are going to be pushing those horses pretty hard. So I don't think we should be... <clears throat> uh, out of character, I don't think we should be charging ahead. Uh, just like moving ahead at normal pace is fine. Agreed. No, we're not 100% sure where it's happening yet. And no good has come from arriving at the plot in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. that if we are uh, charging ahead, uh, especially once we get to that spot, it will be uh, very loud and we don't want the uh, beasts to hear us come. Very so, good point. Normal pace? Yep. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. So, with Perry and Calarian leading this this charge down the southern trade tradeway uh, from the Watergate Southern Gate, go ahead and make a perception check each of you, or one can assist the other and give advantage. Ugh. <clears throat> okay, okay. It's not bad. So, it's a really beautiful spring day. The wind is is blowing. It's not terribly hard. The weather's not too hot. It's actually quite nice weather here about this time of year in Waterdeep. As you guys are traveling along, keeping to yourselves at first, being quiet or talking amongst each other if you choose to do so. You guys are not coming across any issues. You're, you're making your way in about four hours into the journey. You're looking around and you can see a very beautiful view of the coast on the western side of you, uh, which would be to your right since you're heading south. It's it's just it's very serene. It's a very peaceful. It's a very clean, wide path, large enough for about two carts a piece. Um, but you guys are kind of riding right now, single file or however you want to, um, as you travel down this tradeway, looking around for anything like that. You can see out in the distance now, about four hours into this journey, over to the east, a large patch of greenery coming up to you. And it's it's getting closer, and the closer it get, you, you're noticing it's a lot larger than you first thought. And Calarian, you, you notice this first, and you're able to point it out to the group. So it just looks like a, like a big old bush coming at us, or something. Um, yeah. So I mean, from from when you guys had started, and you're making your way through, uh, you, you saw a lot of ridge line. You saw a lot of ocean to your right, and 
now that you guys are getting closer about halfway through this this first leg of the journey because the, the whole you know 24 miles a day that's about eight maybe nine hours of riding time so it was about the halfway mark that you start noticing about we'll say 20 30 miles out is another it or is the large patch of forest that you are assuming is that same patch of forest where these merchants have been having trouble and you notice that as you're looking out further with that perception check that the trail starts winding its way closer to that forest and then you can just barely see as it starts trailing off heading further south towards Daggerhorn. <clears throat> so you guys press on, keeping a lookout. At you guys some keep... point during yes. the uh, ride, I'm gonna sidle up to uh, Kalarian. I believe is how you pronounce it. Yep. And just sort of look over. Um, I don't mean to sound rude, but uh, what are you... What do you mean, what am I? <laughs> like, uh, I've not seen your uh, kind before. sort of fitted with the reins. Yeah. <clears throat> well. I'm sorry. I'm... I, and so j just just for, because I don't know if you guys can see, I don't know if you guys have avatars up, but um, I'll give you a, a description of Eldane. So a as you're looking at Eldane, <clears throat> and again, th this is up to you and if you've ever met them before, he's humanoid in form, but he has a very interesting hue of blue and white and his hair it doesn't look like a, a normal human's hair that you can recall it, it it actually almost looks like these stalks of some sort and they are tied up in a very neat ponytail on the back of his head but they're still flailing about him and he has elongated pointed ears and if, if you're looking close enough it almost looks as if his hands and feet well, no, you're wearing shoes, but as if his hands are webbed in a way, very slightly in between each finger, and you can see these small protrusions of bone now that you're riding up next to him, sticking out of his arms, just barely from under his his uh, cloak, and it, it, almost, it almost appears to be some kind of fin. Well, uh, I am a dragonborn, but same could be said about you. I haven't seen your kind before. Oh, I am uh, Ganassi. Uh, water. Water Ganassi. Is anyone wearing fancy armor? Like fancier than basically light, light armor? I'll, I'll, I'll reword that. Metal armor. Is anyone wearing, wearing metal armor? I'm wearing chain mail. Alright, so then... Yeah, Perry's gonna, like, interrupt you guys. And, like, just start, like, looking at your armor. Wondering who made it. All that crap. Just interjecting with, like, all these, like, crazy, uh, fanboy questions that you wouldn't know how to answer as a <laughs> unless you're a smith. <laughs> Yeah, well, okay. Go ahead. Uh, I look at Perry and I said, I just, I have picked this up uh, several years ago uh, when I was traveling the South Coast, picked up in Baldur's Gate. Oh my, do you mind, well, when we get a chance, I'm going to I'm gonna look it over. I need, I need to know, I need to make sure your, your armor's uh, repaired and all that stuff. If you don't mind, it'll make me feel better. Of course. I'm I'm gonna spend the ride just doing my best to try to be reading my spell book and studying as best I can while on a horse. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> make a concentration check for me. Oh, I have an advantage on those. You do for maintaining concentration spells. Oh, okay. That's not what you meant. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Comes at double net one. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, he wouldn't get the advantage for this because this is just him trying to concentrate on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. You, you've read this. You, re this is your book. You, you've read it enough. You, you know the gist of what you're looking for, and it's not too terribly difficult, but extremely uncomfortable to focus on um, basic thought uh, while you're trying to read this book. But you, you manage. Do you guys keep pressing on? Uh, yes. What would, uh, would Eldane like to expand on his question? Or expand on my response to his question? You sure can. Yes. Um, you're born, dragon born. What does... I've heard of dragons. There's, there's stories of um, the ones that dwell beneath the waves and, and watched over us. But they're what what color is um color and scales? Silver. But uh they were not of your colour. They were a uh, uh, bronze. What? Um so do you want me to make like a any sort of check on like knowledge of dragons and stuff? Uh for Eldane, um well, you, you tell me, like, in, in your travel from your home tribe over to Waterdeep, how how many dragonborns do you think you've seen? Me, like barely any. Okay. <laughs> he would have well, probably sorry, seen a, a mix match of a few races within Waterdeep when he was wandering around. Okay, and then but Calarian, these are the first people he's actually spoken to. I gotcha. And then Calarian, how are you asking for how detailed knowledge you know of other dragonborns outside of your color? I mean, it's like it's just in general, like basics. I know, like they're they can be bred or made. You, you, well, actually, no, for you, yeah, you're right. Um, make an intelligence check for me. Oh no, this would be history. Make a history check for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, with your particular circumstance, you don't really know too much outside of. There's a smattering of different color dragonborn. You don't. It's hard for you to determine currently which ones are good, which ones are bad. When it comes to dragons, yeah, you know which color dragons are typically bad, which ones are okay. But you've seen a smattering of different color dragonborn. You've seen nice red dragonborns. You've seen extremely angry gold dragonborns, and it's it's hard for you to differentiate between them. Okay. Uh, so, in expanding on the response to him, is like, well, um, I am a subject of Bahamut. Um, God, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Uh, who? Bahamut, he is the platinum dragon. He is the god of all goodly dragons. Oh. Interesting. It goes back to fitting with the rain. Um, Eldane, if you wanted to make a religion check, you can. <laughs> Just to see if you recognize Bahamut. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's news to you, and it, it actually it enthralls you a little bit. You're, you're the the two of you spend some time and. Calarian takes takes some of his time to try to explain who Bahamut is and how they see him in such a positive light. And uh, over time, you guys will start learning and understanding more about Bahamut. Uh, I will listen with rapt attention. <laughs> what? I will. Li I will listen closely. Sure. Okay. So. Um, at, at this point in the journey, since this was that first bit, four hours of uh, trekking, nothing immediate has been coming across your guys' path. Um, there hasn't been any signs of creatures, there haven't been any other wagons or carts traveling along this path, and um, are you guys keeping the same marching order, pairing Calarian up front? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. You said there was yeah. there was nobody that no other like trading caravans that came by? Correct. In the first four hours of your travel, no, no other caravans have passed, your, passed you guys. So it's just been okay. you guys riding south. 
Um, you haven't gotcha. seen any other, you know, you, aside from the from different seagulls and, and various birds that that coast overhead and just kind of go off on their own business. Uh, an eagle here or there, uh, you watch as one, you know, kind of grabs another crow out of the sky and just starts flying off towards the woods that you guys are seeing out in the horizon. Um, the two of you, Parian and Calarian, Parian and Calarian, can make nice. another, can make another perception check each, or you can give one advantage to the other if you like. With our powers united. Sorry, character sheet disappeared on me. No, nope, no problem. Is it getting darker at this point? It will be, yes. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just like cast light on my saddle. Sure, you got it. You are now a glowing beacon of light leading the way as the sun is setting. Um,. Which, speaking of, now that the the, <clears throat> the sun is starting to set, which is actually surprising because it, it's really beautiful for you guys with it setting on the over the ocean the way it is. That there's no thick cloud coverage overhead; it's just a small scattering of clouds. And you, as you guys are continuing on this this trade way, Perry keeping more focused on the road ahead. Calarian, you're looking out and you notice. It's a really beautiful transition between the oranges and the purple hues as the sun is starting to set behind the ocean. And as you're looking out in that direction, you can see a few mountain peaks way out in the distance, but it's way too hard to make any kind of sense of distance or gauge how big they are from where you guys are going. But it looks great. And it would be at this point now this this other four hour leg of the journey that you guys are now seeing the immensity of this forest on your left it is large that it's a huge canopy of green trees densely packed amongst each other and perry with that roll of yours you can see up ahead maybe about another mile or so ahead is what look to be a couple carts some turned over, some completely destroyed, but that's about what you make out now. So, Perry will yell out, "There's, there's trouble ahead! Let's, go, let's go!" And he will uh, sort of sprint forward or ride forward as fast as he's capable of, since he's barely holding on to this horse still. You got it. Actually, you know, he's, he's, he's gotten the hang of it after all this time, but he's still, he's still struggling a little bit. Agreed. It, it, it was a little rocky at first, but it, you're not. it's not the first time you've been on a horse. You're not completely new to it. So, <clears throat> Perry points it out to you guys, and now that the sun is getting really low, it's, hitting, it's almost hitting dusk. You guys finally make your way to this patch of the tradeway where the roadway is littered with wood debris, broken off spokes, carts flipped over to the side, harnesses just ripped and torn from their from the their leather holdings onto the carts. It's it almost looks like a bit of a train wreck. Was there any goods left? Make um are you just kind of surveying it real quick or are you looking through each of the carts? Uh just like anything like I assume since there are probably trading carts, there would be a lot of stuff, so he's kind of like, not look, looking for like small stuff, just like big bulk amount of stuff, I guess. Sure. Um, if you guys are going to be looking through the carts, go ahead and make a perception check for me as you're just doing a quick survey of the situation. Everyone can if they like. Oof. Okay. Um, a lot of it looks really ransacked. There, there's a bit of material here and there. You, you find some sacks of flour that were torn open. Um, you find various pieces of stone and, and various tools that you recognize that would be used in um, wood carving or blacksmithing. And you see, and like, oh yeah, well these are these are a really nice set of chisels. And it, but it doesn't. There isn't a lot here. 
and then um, if anybody well you guys tell me what, what would you guys do once once you guys notice how much stuff is left um, I'm gonna dismount and sort of just look around the wreck and see if there's any well for starters like signs of a fight like blood or bodies Perfect. and to see if there's any claw marks or anything like that along the um cuts yeah can i help him with that i don't know how that works yeah yeah so for the help action either you can give him advantage or you both can roll a straight roll uh this would be an investigation check for you Show i'll uh, go to give him advantage okay Alrighty. Um, as as they're doing that, I'm just gonna be like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys go ahead and do that. I was just, I was about to do that, but you know, I'll just, I'll just keep a watch out. <laughs> okay, so you're making a watch. Uh, Perry, go ahead and you can uh, roll for survivors. Make an investigation check for survivors. Oh, investigation, not survival. My bad. Correct, because you were specifically mm -hmm. looking for something. Oh, we're bad. Oh, you're good. Okay, so. Eldane and Talim are looking at the wreckage itself to try to get an assessment of what's going on, right? Yeah, just like looking for bodies, claw marks, that sort of thing. Yes. So, it's really strange. You, you're looking at the carts, and you, you can... Uh, well, if, I'm sorry, you know what? If, if you were looking for specific claw marks and stuff, make a survival check for me. No, I can I keep the on. roll? Yeah, you, you, well, you can roll one more time. We'll see what you get. You're going to be lucky. Oh, yeah, even better. <laughs> All right, see? Never keep your roll. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, Talum, Eldane, you guys are looking... <laughs> you guys are looking around. You're trying to get a sense of what's been attacking these guys. Um, Tizio's out looking around, keeping an eye out while you guys are investigating. Perry's off. Just digging through wreckage, ripping off pieces of wood, shouting out, Is anybody here? Is anyone there? <laughs> um, it's the weirdest thing for you, Eldane. You, you have seen a lot of different creatures in the forest. You have fought a various number of things in the forest. And, and you have pretty good sense of tracks, claw marks bite marks, various things that you know are not humanoid in form and you are doing a very good sweep of this and with Calarian's light and your dark vision it's real easy to see there isn't a single claw mark there isn't a single track of an animal, there isn't a single bite mark on any of these carts none of the supplies that are left remaining it it's just as if the carts themselves were pushed over knocked over on their side from nothing and it, it doesn't make any sense it's it's extremely it's extremely odd to you and what you do notice though because of that that survival role is that not immediately in the vicinity but maybe about a hundred or so feet heading towards the direction of the forest you start seeing dragging marks or a couple patches of dirt that are don't appear to be the same coloration as the rest of the surrounding area as if something was traversing that way are the cart still functional maybe in total there's about six or seven carts there maybe two or three of them can be repaired with, okay. just, with just some time and um, probably Tizio would look over and be like yeah we can fix that no problem and especially with um, a master blacksmith and a tinkerer yeah you guys can repair enough of the carts that if you were ever in need of transporting stuff you, you would be able to have that at your disposal it uh, it okay. does not look like uh, there was much of a fight. I think maybe the uh, horses got spooked or something. And as I say that, I'm gonna sort of 
look around the front or nearby the carriages just to see what happened to the horses that were pulling them. Yeah. As to whether the tracks run off or whether they just like slump or. Gotcha. Kind of... Yep. And and with that roll keeping the same roll, you, you do notice that the carts themselves, a, a standard cart being uh, two leather straps mounted onto a single horse, or or in this case there was there was you know one cart that was carrying the stone cutting tools uh, that had a dual harness set up for two horses, and you're looking at all of these these harnesses and they they all seem to have been snapped in a similar fashion but not with a blade and then you can see that the trails of each of the horses they, they scatter in various directions north some north some south some to the east but you you get the sense that nothing was slain here I'm sort of looking up at everyone else with a big grin the horses escaped Just taking a quick yeah, peek. Yeah, that's nice. Taking a quick peek back at the leather, does it look like it was broken through force? Like someone just ripped it apart, or it was just cut? It looks cut, but not a clean cut. Like if you were to take something jagged and rub it across the leather a couple times and it's and you can see that it's frayed in a lot of places and then it just eventually gave enough with with enough pulling from the horses trying to leave and with whatever it was that was um, running its way through this this thick leather it eventually snapped off and there are uh, how many characters are there uh, in total, about six or seven. It's a little hard to tell. A lot of them are pretty shattered. That would be about nine, ten horses total. Give or take. I'm, uh, I'm sort of scratching the back of his head. I'm not entirely certain uh, these horses escaped with the uh, merchants. It looks like these, uh, their straps were cut and then they broke and ran away. And, uh, well, if the merchants were fearing for their lives, like the, like, uh, what was his name, Barnabas said, they would uh, probably not have taken the time to do that. So I think uh, whatever did this might have a uh, appreciation for beasts. Uh, I'm gonna get off my horse and just kind of, um, kind of say under my breath uh, as a, uh, you know, this guy's not getting us anywhere. Uh, and I'm gonna look around. Um, I'm not, uh, and this is to, out of character here. I'm not sure if I can do it this way or not, but I'm gonna kind of look around uh, and kind of mess around with uh, my goggles and uh, uh, do the ritual um, detect magic for as I'm doing this for the ten minutes. Okay, so, so you're going to spend 10 minutes and, and <clears throat> just um, look through and, and cast the tech magic? Okay. Um, do any so, of you have magical items on you? I don't believe any of you do. I guess, does uh, my blessing of the forge make it magical? Actually, yeah, I would say yeah, because if it's given a plus one and it was a blessing of the forge, there's it a... It does say it becomes a magic item, yes. Yeah, so I, I will say, um, unless anyone else has any magical items, which I don't think I saw from character sheets, um, Tizio, you would see a faint... Um, it's a faint uh, yellowish-green aura coming off of the Warhammer of Perry. It's very faint. But um, as you're looking around through the carts, um, just trying to get a sense of was anything, you know, left behind that can give clues. You unfortunately don't notice any other magic in the area. So you'll see Perry take out two lodestones, uh, kind of like moving them along one of the carts, um, muttering some words and casting mend on some of the broken like pieces, so that they like, become like whole again, and then. Like working to uh, repair the a couple of carts and then saying, oh, we'll need these to bring back the goods. Okay, so um, 
for mending since it takes about a minute to fix about one cubic foot of material it how many cards are you trying to fix it, it'll take you some time to get maybe one or two carts done this evening if you push into the later evenings and it's as you guys are looking out now and and perry was keeping an eye or i'm sorry and uh, tizio was keeping an eye on the surroundings you, you didn't notice anybody approaching from the north or the south and um you, you didn't see anyone coming from the forest so i mean if you guys are trying to stay here on the main road and work on this i mean you guys can totally do that Perry's one to Perry's one to get in the in the zone, so he's gonna be like pretty much be working until someone interrupts him. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, okay. Should we not uh, make sure we can get the uh, stuff first before we uh, start uh, repairing things? Perry's gonna ignore you because he's in the zone. You're gonna have to do more than just talk to him. <laughs> 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 I um. I saw, there's, there's something over here. I saw like a, a path or or like markings. I'll point over to where I saw the indentations in the dirt over about 100 feet away. Okay. All right, are you pointing over or you, did you want to go look at them? I'm pointing over and then just sort of waiting for people's responses. Okay. Um, I'll go with them, but is, the, is it just like, a depre like the grass is just pressed down? It's not like... Yeah, it looks so like if you were to... Uh, drag something through it okay correct and but how big is the the drag marks let's go um, find out yep as as Elodine takes you over and he starts explaining the the differences in, in the depressions of the grass and the different scuff marks of dirt um where those markings and drag marks are they, they start maybe about 100 or so 60 to 100 feet out from the trade way itself the the forest itself is still another good three to four hundred feet away from you so there, there's a good gap in between and as you guys are getting closer and now with it being we're going to say at this time sun sun has gone down completely so um i think you both have dark vision correct uh i do not so i would need to light a torch left. so okay so if you have one yep you go ahead and strike out a torch and eldane helps as he points out the different variations in color and texture and he says this obviously doesn't look natural and now that you're, you're getting closer you see it they're they're varying in size and shape some it it, it almost looks as if um, if you were watching a really large rabbit hop through some wet grass where it'll be an indentation here and then another two feet away there's another indentation and so on and so forth and then there's some some things that are being dragged along and they're not all in a straight line. It's kind of scattered, wiggles a lot. They're, they're just scuff marks, maybe a broken piece of wood here and there. And, but you guys do notice that it's, it's a good scattering of, of various shapes and sizes. By the indentation in the ground, roughly speaking, into, like based on the biggest ones or whatever, is it possible to determine at least roughly how heavy whatever they were dragging was? Make an investigation check for me. Or, uh... This, this would be survival for you. Oof. Okay. <clears throat> um... You take some time to look at it, and... It's, it's hard to determine the exact weight but it's heavy and you can see that it's it's almost as if if you're carrying something and then you dropped it and it just makes that impact onto the ground and then it got picked up again and then whoops it fell again do we know what was being hauled in these carts or is they, are they just empty and broken uh, no, you, you guys know. You were told by Barnabas that there were various different um, merchantile textiles and tools and um, all different types of material components that were being transported from Daggerforth, who is... It, there, <clears throat> uh, if anyone's proficient with history, you can make an intelligence check. A history or intelligence check? Uh, I'm sorry, make a history check. Thank you. You rolled uh, insight, Tizio. There you go. Okay. Um. Yeah. Talum, 
surprisingly, you know, not even from being around here, but you, you spent the past week or two reading up on the surrounding areas because you wanted to get the lay of the land from things here and you kind of point out and you go to the rest of the group. Yeah, you know, Dagger Fort's a, um, they're not a big manufacturing city, but they're, they're very agricultural, so there's always going to be a lot of different farming supplies and there, there's a mountain range nearby and it's, it's, it's not uncommon for them to mine large pieces of stone and shape it as best they can before exporting it out up to Waterdeep for further refinement and use in repairing the city. Tizio, I would say you would know that as well from being from there. Should we, uh... Does it look like the tracks continue? It it does. It looks like the tracks continue on and into the forest. It's, it's a little hard to see with the light that you guys have and the range of the dark vision at this hour. But, um, you can tell that it's a scattering of different indentations leading into the forest, but you don't know how far in. Should we go after this tonight, or wait? I mean, the longer we wait, the further away they could get. So, out of character, yep. and this is sort of table topping, or table discussion is um, they're not going to be very far away if they're constantly raiding. Did I lose you guys? Yeah. Oh, me six went away. That's what it was. Yeah, I stopped it because we're not in the city anymore. I should have done that earlier. So they're not going to be far away. Um, well, we not certain that um, that they're not raiding here and then delivering the cargo elsewhere. Um. I would bet, yeah, that they're probably still hanging out in the forest. If... Basically what Perry said. Okay. Stealth will be hard. It'll be hard to see for some of the party. If we try to go after them at night. Plus, we are going to need a way to carry that stuff back if we want to get... I mean, I have floating discs. Oh, that's right. Wizard stuff. <laughs> and I I don't think it's concentration, so... No, it's not concentration. You can carry up to 500 pounds on a... I think there, it's a... There can be a lot of them. Could be. It, would, it might take you a couple of trips. You're not sure of the amount or quantity or weight. And since we also don't know what's in there waiting for us, it's probably a better idea to wait until morning. Mm-hmm. We'll definitely need some watches, though, for sleeping in the area people are getting attacked. Yeah. So what do you guys want to do? You guys want to try to set up camp, or...? Is there anywhere around here that's semi-secluded? Easier to, Make us a to watch out? Okay. Um... The tradeway itself is relatively flat and open. There is no immediate cover on the path that you guys are currently on where Perry's, you know, sitting there tinkering in the dark. Um, you can look out to the sides and, and you see with your, your dark vision, you get a sense that, I mean, there is some smaller alcoves near the tree line that can provide some cover, but then you know you guys are getting closer to the tree line um but it's it's pretty open as far as this road goes it it almost seems as if you know this tradeway is a tradeway because it's so easily guarded if it were needed okay. but it's up to you guys if you guys wanted to stay on the tradeway or get closer towards the edge of the forest Is it possible to set up shop on the opposite side to where the drag marks are? Like, uh, opposite them? Like, on the 
opposite side of the road. Yeah, so so the road being the dotted line, and then we'll say there's a adjacent line heading in the direction of the forest. It 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 drags off away from the from the the main trade route going towards the forest, where the grass starts to get a little bit taller, thicker, uh, before it heads into the immediate forest vicinity itself. Um, you can certainly find places on the left or the right side to set up camp. You'll see Perry take out a torch and like jam it into the ground, mutter something, and snap his fingers and cast a druid craft to light it and continue about his work. Sure. Yep, I'm familiar with it. Awesome. Okay, yeah, so you guys now have another source of light up. Where do you guys want to set up camp? Uh, I'll lay down my bed roll by the road somewhere. Sure. As he's doing that, I'm just going to uh, be, uh, say, uh, you know, we can grab some of those uh, carts and flip them over and use them for a little bit of cover instead. Well, I definitely, I definitely can't move them, so if you have a plan for that. Well, if we, you know, we, you guys have some strong weapons on you, uh, looking around. Uh, you know, we can use that as leverage and flip them over, uh, you know, and you know, throw, some, so, throw some of those leaves on top, and we'll be fine. Sounds like a plan. So <clears throat> you guys take the materials at your disposal and you set up camp as best you can uh, slightly off the path because you don't want to just be, unless you want to be jumbled up in with the uh, the materials that are currently there while Perry's still working. Um, I'll go lean up against a tree somewhere. Okay. So you're heading away from the tradeway because the nearest tree for you is about three, four hundred feet towards the forest. Is that, there's no trees on the opposite side to where the pathway was? No, because it is a, it is an open field leading up to the forest. So it's, it's a grassland. Case, I will it's grassland. not do that. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. So you, you guys, you guys try to get a semblance of any kind of comfort that you can, and you start um, taking out any, you know, eating supplies, things like that that you need for the evening's rest. Um, are you guys setting up a fire? Are you guys trying to be quiet? What are you guys trying to do? I'd say keep a low fire. What time of year is it? What time of year? It's early spring. Do we know uh, so what the, temperature was? Yeah, is that? Sorry, I was just about to say it for you. Um, with the coastal breeze coming in, since you guys are so close to the edge of the Sword Coast, it it gets fairly chilly at night. But you know, with, with a good bedroll or some proper blankets, it's it's manageable to go a night without a campfire. So we'll, we'll say in, in the in the latest parts of the evening probably going to be dropping around maybe 55 60 degrees uh, I'm just going to propose a uh, small campfire nothing roaring sure okay cool so you guys set up your campfire you guys dish out anything start having you know telling stories to each other what have you um are you guys going to be taking any kind of watches throughout the evening? For, for watches in the evening, um, usually we do about two to three watches. Um, it could be an individual, it could be two people, however many you guys want. I'll take first watch. I'll take second. I'll get third then. Okay. So Perry isn't really concerned about watch, but if he gets woken up, he will understand. Uh, if I may ask, uh, we're all just kind of resting by each other, correct? Like not someone's, you know, 20 feet away or something like that? Uh, not unless they 
specifically stated otherwise. I, I think everyone's within general earshot and sight of each other. Okay, I would like to uh, take a little bit of time here uh, and uh, set up some, not necessarily booby traps, but um, you know, some some you know strings uh, across the floor and, and things like that, and uh, uh, set up alarm, uh, aka my ritual. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so um, okay, so you, and, and I let them know, hey, this is you know X Y Z, you know, don't trip over it, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Well, you you can you can determine who sets off the alarm and who doesn't. So I mean, you can point it out to your allies that hey, this is where the boundary is. But I think at, with the alarm spell you can determine whether people can cross it or not. It, unless you decide that if anyone crosses it, it'll set it off. Uh, because I'm letting them know, uh, essentially anyone, uh, they, they will all know not to set it off and anyone else would set it off, if that answers your question. Okay, sure. So, yep, so you start pulling out the silver wire, you start tracing out the line as you start reciting the words and incantation to set up your alarm spell which is actually pretty awesome because then it, it fits really nicely between all the a lot of the carts that are there so there's it definitely minimizes the amount of entry and exit points for you guys so, out of curiosity am i able to uh the torch i had am i able to put it out and reuse it or is it one and done um i mean it depends on how long you i mean if, if we want to be super technical about that how long were you using it uh, how long would we say we were looking at the tracks before we came back to the carts? Um, it probably maybe about 20 or so minutes. It, it still has some life left in it if you wanted to try to save it. Alright, I'd like to try and do that then. Sure. So yeah, so you recover one torch. So, as you all bed down for the evening, you start getting into the, the groove of things. The rest comes to some of you. For those of you taking first watch, go ahead and Roll a perception check for me. All right. It's new. It's it's definitely strange. Coming here and uh, are, are the both of you up together? Um, or you got sure, Talon? I, I was the only one on watch. I'm second watch. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I misread Talon 6 for the hit die. Sorry. I thought two people were doing perceptions. <clears throat> My apologies. <laughs> so, um, Eldane, it's, it's a new feeling. It's a new experience for you. Um, a lot of this time, you're, you're sitting here, and you're staring at this campfire, and the gentle, pulsating glow. It, it reminds you of the portal back home, and you feel a sense of comfort for the time that you're there. Every now and then you're looking up and trying to remember, oh yeah, I'm out, I'm outside in the wild, but you're used to the wild and you, you kind of lapse in, in feeling, you, you feel safe where you're at. You're not feeling any kind of threat and any kind of issues there. Um, your watch comes to a close, no issue. And you reach over and you wake up the next person. Go ahead and... That would be me. Real quick, during this person's watch, like when, just sort of lie back and pretend to go to sleep, I'm going to, about 15 minutes into the watch, pour out a little bit of water from my water skin and use, try to sneakily use shape water to get a small little stream of water and shoot it into his ear. <laughs> <laughs> make, make a stealth check. Okay. And this was to who? To Thalon, I assume, if he's on Thalon. watch. Oh, uh, to wake him up? I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, passive sleeping perception is 10, I think. What's your passive perception? Oh... Not that. Well, actually, eight plus two plus. Well, I'm not proficient, so no. Nine. Nine. Okay. Probably. So, so. Oh wait, no, it is eleven. I tied. I'd say there's no way it's that low. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's eleven on my character sheet. I'm bad. Okay. No. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you 
are jolted awake and you just you you clasp onto the side of your ear and you're starting to look around and you watch as like Eldane is like already laying down on the on the ground. He's you, you don't see, you don't see a or uh, I would assume you have like some kind of leather hide bedroll or something. He he's like tucked up under his bedroll and he's just kind of like peeking with one eye open but snickering at the same time. Um. Well, I'll just uh I'll just take note of that. <laughs> He kind of mumbles to you. It's your shift. Thanks for waking me up. Give him a thumbs up. All right. Um, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Uh. Okay. Ooh, nice one. So, uh, it is extremely late at night here. The fire is now starting to crackle and pop as it's burning down to its last bit of embers it's still giving off some warmth but um, it's not as bright as it was when you guys first lit it um, looking around just trying to take a, take in the environments it's it's eerily quiet and especially this late at night the stars above are twinkling very brightly uh, the moon itself is uh, it's probably about a crescent moon right now it's just giving some some dim light over the entire patch of grasslands where you're at and you can definitely hear out in the distance on your left is that the sound of the ocean just pulling you back and forth very very calm and peaceful um, you look over towards the forest you might see the occasional owl fly off and dart into the distance possibly hunting some kind of food for the evening but you're not sure but your watch comes to a close and nothing eventful happens I'll go ahead and wake the next one yeah. who's taking their watch me All right. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me no also do any dirty tricks to wake me up <laughs> No. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I could soil you. You see, you see Perry roll over, snap his fingers, mumble something, and the, the campfire erupts into a, uh, a, a nice big flame, oh, okay. and then goes back to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick some dirt on that before I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can light it. I, I I think I was just taking taking advantage of the wording. I don't know. This for Druidcraft? Yeah, I can definitely light it. You can create a harmless sensory effect. So. You can you can instantly light or snuff out a candle for a small campfire. Yeah, yeah. All right, sure. Sounds fun. So yeah, you you definitely give it a nice little boost there as you roll over, try to get some additional warmth uh, for sleeping. Um, <laughs> and then Clarion, you said you were going to snuff it down a little bit, try to kill it? Oh uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely kick some dirt on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. So <laughs> and then, you know, look, look down at the sleeping pair and just sigh and shake my head. You, you swear you hear him mumble something in Halfling, but you're not entirely sure. Um, but yeah. So getting towards the tail end of the, the shift here, it, it was extremely quiet. Um, nothing, nothing catches your attention uh, or causes you any kind of alarm, uh, probably until about just as sunrise is starting to peak up. And with your roll, you see from the south uh, a single horse, and it seems to be trotting in your direction rather quickly. Is there anybody riding it? Um, with that perception roll, yeah, I, I'd say about a mile out from where you are, especially with the sun now starting to crest over the um, the mountain range to your east, um, you can see one humanoid-looking person riding it. Uh, I'm gonna try and get everyone awake. I don't know there's a rider coming. No problem. Um, okay, yeah. So y you. 
start rustling through, waking everybody up, letting them know, hey, there's there's a rider coming. You, you guys are not directly on the trail. You guys are off a little bit. You took some of the broken carts that are over there to, to set up, so you're not blocking the trail by any means. Um, but yeah, a, as the rider is, is rushing past, um, <clears throat> do, you, do you guys do anything? You just stare at him as he goes by. You, you can see as he's, as he's getting closer now, it, it looks to be a younger human male, um, maybe in his early 20s and he doesn't seem to be carrying much he's got just a single horse and saddle with uh, maybe a saddle bag on the side and uh, you can see like a, a rolled up piece of parchment in one hand that he's as he's grabbing the reins and it just looks like he's on a full run uh, am I able to tell if he has like any sort of um, like sigil on him or, or like a, a insignia for like a, a a trade company or anything like that? Make a perception check. Oops, sorry. Uh, did he... So he was he coming down from the road? And um, I'll use Bountiful Luck on his... Sure. Uh, go ahead and make another perception check, Tizio. You, you feel a strange presence wash over you as... Uh, Woo! Perry I just, sure do. Perry just kind of does a little whistle... And you feel inspired this early in the morning. Um, you you do notice um, one crest on the on the rear satchel as he's now getting really close to like bypassing you guys. He's he's maybe you know about two hundred feet away as he's getting really close, and and you can just barely make out what looks to be uh, the symbol that you specifically actually would recognize as the um, Dagger Fort Crest. But he's now just... He came from the road, right? He came from the road. From the south? From the south, yep. Okay. Perry will grumble. You woke, <clears throat> you woke me up for this guy? And start heading back to sleep. Okay. Anybody else do anything? Let him ride by. I'm gonna wave at him. Okay. Um, as as he's crossing right in front of you guys, he, he he clearly notices each of you, but he's he's determined to keep on pushing forward. You you see as he starts to slow down, not not too, not too much to a trot, but you can see that he he knows that there's a lot of debris and stuff on the road, and he he doesn't seem too alarmed by it, but he he knows that he has to kind of navigate through it and. He just kind of looks over at the group of you, nods, and continues on. Starts heading up towards uh, what you would assume is water deep or further. But uh, the last watch for Calarian does come to a close. Um, the early morning starts to hit each of you now, and even though Perry tried to roll back over to fall asleep, the sun's starting to shine in his eyes, and he starts grumbling about having been wake up, woken up earlier. But um, you guys get a full night's rest. Nothing terrible happened, and uh, you guys are ready to start the day. How how far did I make it through uh, the carts? I guess. Um. So you got there. You left around eleven. It's about eight hour ride. Uh, let's see. It started around eight o'clock. Uh, full night's rest. You probably, I would say, if Tizio was helping you, you could have probably repaired two carts. Alright. So, there, oh, go ahead. I was like, hopefully that, sh that should be enough. I think even one cart's probably enough with uh, our wizard. Yeah, quite possibly. Okay, so... Uh, you all managed to get a full night's rest. The day is yours. What do you guys want to do? Say so we uh, follow those trademarks. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so uh, for this, as you guys are <clears throat> looking out, um, you, you can all easily see this now. Um, it's looking into the forest itself. It is not rideable on horseback um, the the trees are a little too densely packed in together um, if you were to start 
heading into the forest uh, to follow these tracks, um, you'd probably have to tie them up on the edge or something like that, just so you guys are aware. But um, if you guys are going to proceed in, please let me know what marching order you guys want to go in. I'll go first. So held in up front. I'll follow. I'll follow as well. Clarion, and then who was following her? Uh, Tom, I think. Tom, thank you. Sorry, I will get used to your voices. I promise. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Tizio will be next. Okay. Falling up Perry in the rear. Sure, that works. All right. Which does you does did you have a uh, metal armor? He's wearing leather studded armor. Ah, okay. What about his weapon? Uh, what about your weapon, Tizio? Oh, sorry, I hit the wrong key. Um, uh, at this moment, he just has his uh. Quarter, quarter staff that he's using as a kind of like a walking stick. Okay. So you see okay. a, a wooden old quarter staff, and then you see on his okay. back is a light crossbow. Yep. Perry's fairly un uninterested in those things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, falling up the rear. Alrighty. Okay, so with Eldane and Calarian, uh, you guys are leading the charge into this forest. Um, what are you guys looking for? Following the track specifically. Okay. Uh, you guys can either each make survival checks or make one with advantage. Eldane. Is it dark in the forest? You right now you don't know because you guys are just approaching the forest now. Oh okay. Uh, if if I may, I, I apologize. Uh, before we enter, can I uh, take ten minutes to uh, mess around with my goggles uh, and enable uh, detect magic on them? AKA Ritual Detect Magic. For the next 10 minutes while you're in the forest? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. correct, while we're walking in. Sure, not a problem. Yeah, so uh, it, it'll take you about 10 minutes to get up to the, the tree line anyway, so, and as you guys are following the track, so we'll say, yeah, you can definitely do that. <clears throat> okay, yep, so... Eldan and Calarian, you guys are now hitting the, the base tree line of this forest here, and comparatively it is much larger than you had thought originally um as you're now standing in front of one of these massive tree trunks it the canopy seems to shoot up about maybe 15 to 20 feet above you guys and it's it's pretty thick um you're not entirely sure of how deep the forest goes itself but um you can imagine that it, it shouldn't be too hard to navigate through on foot. Um, as you guys are working in tandem together, and you know, Eldane will say, I think I found a track, and then Calarian's like, no, there's definitely a piece of wood chip over here, and you guys are starting to work your way up through the forest, and you're finding uh, bits and pieces guiding you forward pretty decently. Uh, you're, you're noticing that it, it doesn't look like any anyone or anything's been trying to cover up that tracks as they've been going through um, For that first 10 minutes um, Tizio as you guys are going through looking through these tracks Unfortunately, you're, you're not finding any kind of magical presence or anything in the general vicinity. I think it's what a 30-foot range I Believe you are correct. Yes, okay Yeah, 30 feet so yeah, unfortunately, you're not you're not detecting anything magical as you guys are following tracks and you're uh, just walking. Other than other than Perry's uh, warhammer, you do see again <clears throat> it, uh, that that faint yellowish green glow. Um, you guys continue trekking on for about an hour or so, um, looking up above you. That although the canopy is thick and tall, uh, a, a decent amount of light does shed through the canopy's uh, top so that it's giving you guys a, a decent view of things ahead of you. So um, a lot of shaded areas, but also a lot of light as well. There, there seem to be a lot of patches in different, uh, different parts of this forest. Um, you guys continue pressing on um, with your guys' survival checks. You're not noticing any kind of traps or dangers or anything that are in your way. Um, you guys are feeling pretty confident that um, with Eldane and Calarian up front, you guys are following a pretty good trail. 
about another half hour into the journey. Um, Aldane and Clarion, go ahead and make perception checks, or you guys can make one with advantage, your choice. Oof. Okay. Should have gone with advantage. <laughs> Always hindsight, right? Okay. <clears throat> As you guys are pushing through. Small question. Yes. Are we stealthing, group? That's a good question. Are you guys stealthing? Uh, we did not talk about it, so I imagine we're just walking. Not moving. Not Perry moving isn't. Back. Let's say so Perry is not a stealthy back. individual. <laughs> cool. Not trying to make a ruckus, but not moving particularly quietly. Right. All new parties end up working out the kinks eventually. Uh, for for future reference, as DM, if you guys are not stealthing, I'm automatically assuming you're not stealthing. You are just walking at a normal pace, doing everything at a normal speed. Mm. Understood. Um, yep. So let me pull up this wonderful thing so I can give a better description. Because I have it. There it is. <clears throat> so, about uh, another 30 minutes or so into this forest, um, you notice that there is another patch of open space surrounded by a lot of these thicker trees. Um, it seems to be a, a wider open clearing, maybe about 60 feet wide or so, and Unfortunately, because of those perception rolls, you guys had to get pretty darn close. And then you start noticing <clears throat> some um, shining off of the light from the top of the canopy, some broken carts, and a couple boxes, some glints of silver, some glints of gold, tools, pieces of stone, and various other things scattered amongst the floor here in this forest. You guys right now are probably, I'd say, we'll say about 30 or so feet away from it. Is this in like a clearing or is it just among it, the trees? This is in a clearing. Uh, give me one moment. To fix the secondary map, and I can show you as I drag you guys over. Let me know when you can see it. We can. Okay. Yep. So, as you guys are entering into this clearing, um, you guys are probably about down in the bottom right corner of this area right now, um, approaching this area, and then that's when you start noticing the various carts and boxes and other things and all kinds of components and textiles and, and things you're easily recognizing as the materials from the card on the road are just now here. But you're not seeing anything yet. It seems quiet. I guess I'll, should we work our way over there? Perry, without much care. Oh, it looks, this must be where they, where they brought the stuff? I asked Perry to hold on. Oh, sorry. It's, is there danger? Don't we don't know yet. Ooh, that's a better token. Yep, I'll give you control over it. Uh, by the way, I didn't get to say it in the, the uh, chat, but uh, thank you for making the token. Oh, no problem. It's easy to do. Okay. So is, <clears throat> go ahead. I'll just say I can't save the token all the way. Uh, it should have been on your... Oh, I'll send it to you. That's fine. I'll get it to you. All right, cool. Cause, uh, so, there's... Go ahead. so there's just a bunch of carts and boxes. We don't see any obvious creatures around or tracks or anything. Currently, no, not with that perception check you had just rolled. Um, but you, you're clearly seeing that this, this smattering of carts and things like that. So, 
if you wanted to try to investigate or do another perception check, you would have to get closer. But right now, you guys are too far away to see anything too in too much detail. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, choices. How are much closer safe. would we need to get to do another check? You'd have to find out. <laughs> I'm gonna hug the tree line here and try to sneak up to this one. Sure. Uh, who is the uh, uh, the biggest, like, uh, bulkiest character? Like, the, the one that looks the toughest out of everyone here. Probably, probably me. Yeah, probably Calarian. Calarian. Born. I'm going to try and uh, stick up next to him. Sure. Okay. You, you guys don't have to move and drag pieces around, not unless any kind of... It will work it out. I'm just giving this as a visual reference. Um, so, I mean, as we're talking, narrating through this stuff... We'll we'll determine placement if a battle ever starts like that, just for future reference, okay? <clears throat> but um, ju just so you guys are aware, because I I hate click and drag for an entire map. <laughs> <laughs> just too many flashbacks. Yeah, just PTSD all over the place. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, with that being said, do you guys? want to try to get closer to see what kind of components are here on the ground or any, any signs of life or tracks or information of what could have left all this stuff here? Up to you guys. Yeah, I'll go take a look around. Okay. Um, so go ahead and as you're starting to make your way closer now, you're maybe about 20 or 30 feet or so away from these carts and the, and the, the horde of stuff. Go ahead and make another perception check for me. Oof. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Perry is uh, holding back in response. I'd like to move forward just a little bit too and try to make another check. Yeah, go for it. I'm going to be over here looking at this cut. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll give everyone an action to move somewhat into the, into the map and then we'll proceed from there. Nice roll. So I'm up to the tree line here. All right. Nice roll. <clears throat> All right. So as you guys are starting to walk your way forward from tree to tree and you're starting to get a better view of this clearing out in front of you, um, Eldane, you would notice it first, immediately followed by Clarion and Perry. You, you hear a loud and boisterous and as you start looking around the tree line on the opposite end of the clearing emerging out of the trees and slamming down onto the ground you see a what appears to be a very large very blue dragon this is going to end well and it starts stomping its way forward and you watch as it just starts roaring this thunderous roar in front of you and then you start noticing this this electrical energy pulsing in front of its 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 horn nose and it just lifts up into the air and this long and and extremely vibrant bright white and yellow thunderbolt just streaks out across the sky in front of you and then does anyone speak Draconic? Yep. No. You hear uh, Kalarin. Go ahead. Are you going to ask a question? Uh, no, I was just going to say as the dragon appears and stuff, um, I'm just going to... Um, I'm right next to it. I'm behind a dragon board, and uh, I'm just going to tap his uh, like his shoulder. And it's like, you got this big guy, and like kind of shrug back in behind him. I'm already off hiding behind the tree somewhere. <laughs> 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 Okay. How uh, big of a dragon does this look like? Uh, from where you guys are to seeing this, um, the creature size is large, um, but you are seeing probably what amounts to a 30 to 40 foot tall, we're talking foot to shoulder, and then lengthwise, maybe like chest to tail, another good 40, 50 feet. Okay. Like, okay. this guy is massive, and he looks extremely angry, 
and <clears throat> Calarian, it was right after that loud and boisterous thunderbolt into the sky that you hear in Draconic, <laughs> and you know that to be, it's like, leave this place, leave my belongings. What do you guys want to do? Uh, with my education, uh, would I know anything about uh, 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 blue uh, dragons? Make a history check. Yeah, I'm not muted. I would say, <clears throat> with you being with your background you have studied enough to know that they don't belong in forests they're not natural to forests Perry would be frozen or would be scared but he'd be muttering this doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. they weren't there was no dragon they didn't talk about dragons they didn't say anything about dragons Do you guys interact with it at all? Are you guys just trying to hide? What are you guys doing? He's starting I'd to like to try and uh, interact with it because I think I'm yeah. the only one who can actually... He's, he's lumbering closer now and you see as he's just... You can see that he's looking in your guys' direction and he's stomping on the ground and he's making this big display of, of might and his wings stretch out and he yells out again in Draconic and you hear again, I said leave! Does he look... Does he look like he's impacting the terrain around him? Make a perception check. Ooh, good question. Um, I, I'm not smart enough to think about that, but would my character be smart enough to think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking the same same thing. Um, that, that's the penalty I have for playing a high intelligence character. <laughs> go, go ahead and make a perception check, guys. Seems perfectly real to me. Um, oop, almost. Perry. E everyone else is looking around, and they're just kind of dumbstruck by this this ginormous blue dragon that is stomping in anger and clearly knows they're there. And you're looking at it, and you're short. You're used to not looking up at people because you're tired of doing that. It hurts your neck. But you're looking at its feet. And nothing's moving. The ground's not moving. It's making sounds. But you're not seeing it physically alter the terrain in any way. And it, it's weird. It, you're not quite sure. You, you hear this very faint <laughs> in the distance somewhere. <laughs> that one. Uh, Perry, uh, definitely scared, but uh, noticing that tiny detail will kind of calm down enough to kind of walk up to, uh, is it Calarian? Yep. Yeah. Walk up to Calarian, just kind of like tap on each other. I, th I, don't, I don't think it's real. You, you can speak to it though, so just know that I don't think it's real. Uh, I'm going to ask it, what is a blue dragon doing in the middle of a forest? In Draconic or in Common? Draconic. <clears throat> um, it, <clears throat> it, it's still trying to bolster a very aggressive appearance, but then it, it it's just in, in a response almost, almost as if belittling you. It's like, this stuff belongs to me, it's mine, it's not yours. What's your name? Make a persuasion check. Hmm. Out of curiosity, and given my circumstances, I would would I know, or at least be common knowledge that chromatic dragons are evil. Yes, we actually talked about that before you guys journeyed out. You know different colored dragons and whether they're good or bad 
and you also oh, right, know, right, right. And, and you would know the general understanding of what Tizio knew about where natural habitats are for blue dragons that they're normally in a desert type of environment and that it's extremely strange to see one in a forest and, and now that you're starting to settle down and Perry's kind of mumbling about how it's not moving anything you're like yeah wait that is weird why is it here and he kind of looks at you this this large dragon and he just starts looming at you and looking and he says it's none of your concern that's an interesting name <laughs> you, 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 you <laughs> I almost do want to dad joke this <laughs> What are you guys doing? He's, he's starting to lumber closer towards you. Perry! So, given the information that Perry told me that he's not making tracks, I mean, I, I can tell that now, right? Yes. You, you can see now that th this dragon, even though he's starting to stride forward, and, and now that he's getting closer and closer to you guys, it, he looks to be... Make an insight check. Very nice. It, it seems to be a, a presentation almost, a, a show of some kind of force of might, but why hasn't it attacked you yet? You're not entirely sure. And with that insight check and thinking about what this dragon's doing, you start picking up on the <laughs> noises coming from somewhere out in the forest around you. It's it's not it's not one, but more than more than one, and it's this high pitched, small sounding chuckle, giggle, laughter. I'd like to to call out the dragon. You know, say it's you know you're very large, you're very mighty looking, but you're not imposing enough to even bend the grass beneath your feet. Okay, I'm gonna throw a pebble at it. Make an attack roll. Uh, just strength or dex or? Oh, uh, for a... This would be an improvised weapon. It would be a dexterity without proficiency. So d20 plus dex. <laughs> Alright, yeah. You, you pick up a rock <clears throat> and you, you lob it in the direction of this creature and it goes through it. You're sure you hit it dead center, but it went through. As you watch, you watch as it lumbers closer towards you. Um, Kaleri, uh, who was it? Kaleri, you said that it was uh, not imposing, right? Basically, yeah. Okay, yep. <clears throat> you, you watch as he gets closer towards you, and he says, We'll show you who is intimidating. I need. Let's see, uh, Calarian, and who's that, Talum, and, yep, Perry and Tizio to make, let me double check the saving throws. Wisdom? What, what kind of saving throw? I will double check for you, give me one second. Yes, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Okay, as yep. this was happening, like, there was a lot happening at once, could I have, uh, snapped my f hawk familiar into existence? Yes, well, yeah, we'll, we'll say you did that as this was all the conversation was going down. So, 17. I just realized oh, and she is fucked up, apparently. So, you watch as this dragon that has now lumbered its way on foot towards you. Wait, I'm confused. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, wait, never mind. I'm in it. Dumb. No, Sorry. That's fine. So, you, you watch as this lumbering uh, blue dragon starts making its way closer towards you and then he leans down low and this colorful spray of mist starts releasing from what you kind of think is its mouth uh, let's see Talum is good Perry is good but um, and Calarian is excellent Tizio you watch as this, this white and yellow mist starts encompassing your body and you just you you inhale it accidentally and then you just exhale and you just man you feel really good right now like everything's super copacetic 
who cares about this dragon? Who cares about what's going on with this stuff, man? And everybody roll initiative for me. Roll what? Roll initiative for me. Oh, shoot. I didn't click my token. Should I... Oh, uh, I got the tracker anyway, so give me one second. So let's Should go. I re-roll that, or... Uh, I mean... I go ahead. I, th I think you can manually add it. Because yeah, I can yeah, you can change it. it. Yeah, go ahead. I have to roll. There we go. Let's see here. And we'll just roll like this. I kind of forgot I had a familiar for uh, flying around until right then. Okay. Well, it would have been useful. It's not a problem. Get a lay well, for, of the land. For your familiar, I won't make you roll its own initiative. It'll just go on your go. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to... I don't think it can attack or anything. I was just going to uh, use it to, like, fly around. Right, no, that's fine. Yeah, you can look through it. You can cast spells through it that are touch-based spells. Yeah, but I, I, I just kind of forgot. Because, like, when we got here, I was like, oh, I don't know how to look around. But then I realized right now I had a familiar. <laughs> it would have been <laughs> useful. <laughs> So let me change up this music a little bit. Let's see if we can get that going. Okay, cool. So everybody is in the initiative tracker, I believe. Can I arrange it? Okay, the other way. All right. Let's see if we can check. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, Eldane, nope, Perry was up first, my apologies. I don't think it's sorted. Yeah, I thought I sorted it on mine. I did, and I hit next on it, it was my fault, let's see. If I can so it's my turn, right? Yeah, it's your turn, Perry, I'm sorry. Still working out the bugs on that, I'm not a big roll 20 guy. No worries. Um... Well, Perry confused because I'm assuming we all saw the saw um, him throw a rock through it, right? You guys watched as the rock passed through it, but you guys definitely saw this cloud of smoke emanate from what you think was it. Let's see, I guess Perry will take a, I guess an investigative swing at it just to see what happens. Okay, uh, make an attack at disadvantage. Disadvantage, okay. I got, I got to miss this, so I'm pretty really So I miss. Yeah, unfortunately. Sorry. Yeah, you, you go to swing through what you know is the obvious illusion, but something, something must have been there if they cast, if they made some kind of spell or, or uh, gas emanate from it, and you, you swing in through this, through this uh, illusion, but it, you find nothing. Uh, you still got some movement and uh, bonus if you wanted it. Yeah, I think. Nope, that's I'm done. That's my turn. Okay. Next up is Eldane. He's muted. I am going to grab out my sort of gnarled wood staff out of my back. Okay. And just from where I am, sort of slam it into the ground in front of me as the ground sort of upheaves slightly in front of me and these grasping roots lance out and I'm going to cast Entangle at around this point here, just above it. So it goes 20 foot. 20 uh, foot? 20 foot sort of square, okay. like in that let's, sort of way. Okay. So it's like a... Is it uh, cubed or is it radius? Let's see. Da, 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 da. It is a square. square. So 10, 20. I think this works. Let me get back over to the map. So like around there-ish? Or you're not trying yeah, to... Yeah, just so it's not hitting... Just, yeah. um, gotcha, gotcha. Alright, so yeah, that is are. a deck save. Is it not strength check? Gotcha. I think that might be slightly too big. It's like a 20 foot square. It's a strength check. Yeah, that's 25. Yeah. Oh wait, no, that is a... Adjust. Oh wait, it, it was 20. No, it was yeah, good. Strength saving throw. Good. No, because your, your ruler is snapping from the middle, not yeah. the edge. Yeah, 4x4 four four is what it is. Gotcha. Alright, so that is a strength check. 
double check. Do 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 do. Oh, all right. So it gets uh, a lot of my rolls will not be shown, just so you guys are aware. But yeah, it definitely fails both of those. So. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you watch as these uh, these entangling vines grasp up and attempt to, to entangle this giant blue dragon, but it, it seems to pass right through. But you also hear a a squeal. And then for my movement, I'm going to run up and into the illusion here. You're gonna run straight into the illusion? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Does that end your turn? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next up we have Tizio. Uh, and you said that like I feel very uh, relaxed and such? Yes, I need you to roll D6. Six. The target does not move, and the only thing it can do on its turn is make another wisdom save to try to end the effect. So go ahead and make another wisdom save for me. Boom, nice. So <clears throat> you, you stand there for a moment and you're, you're looking around at everyone starting to rush towards this large drag and, and you're like, wait, but... <sighs> I don't know why, uh, and you, you, just, you just start shaking your head and you remember your fo your focus and why you're here and you shake off the effect. It's very strange. But unfortunately that, that ends your turn for that one. Next up we have the creature. So you don't see it, but you hear something in that vicinity, very close to the dragon is squealing and screaming and is very unhappy and it is going to go ahead and Ooh, let's see. yeah if it's i'm sort of inside the illusion do i see anything or is it um so it, it's it's hard to describe i mean you're you're running into a large blue dragon you're as you get in there you notice definitely for sure that this is an illusion um, but you're not seeing anything inside the space where you're standing. Not immediately. But um, on its turn, let me not click on that thing. It's going to, it can't move from where it's at, so it is just going to look at you, Eldane, since you ran into it, because it can see you, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Doesn't it have to use its action to break free? It, if it wants to break free, but since it knows it can't, it's using its action to do something else. Okay. Whatever it is, it's trapped in there. And you can definitely hear it trying to push against the vines. So, uh, Elden, make a wisdom save for me. Was what you needed. Um, so you feel a very powerful suggestion come across your mind that says leave and you really want to just get out of here. So the creature casts suggestion. Oh. <laughs> to tell me twice. Then, um, so also just so you guys are aware, um, I didn't, uh, normally because I play tabletop RPGs, like creatures of the same type, I roll one initiative, all of them. So there is going to be a second creature that's going to be moving right now, and I'm going to be using it. Um, so, oh, but also, Eldane, even though you uh, were given suggestion to leave, you do notice that the creature that was once invisible is now no longer visible or invisible and you can see a very tiny blue dragon with wings almost like a butterfly 
but he still told you to leave. And then, uh, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 feet. The second creature is going to get as close as he can. And let's see. Yeah, he's going to do the same thing. He is going to look at... Who's the closest one to him? That would be Perry. Believe we're in range. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm just making sure that the range is right. 30 feet. 10, 20, just in range. Okay, I need you to make a wisdom save to perform Perry. Very nice. <clears throat> you also get the sense that not this creature, but some, something in the back of your mind urges you to just leave them alone. But you, you shake it off and you say, no, there's there's a reason we're here. And, and you don't feel anything happen or take over to you. But at the same time, uh, all of you notice on the left side, perched up on a cart, no longer invisible. He's now hiding under the cart. Uh, he's perched on the cart. Is another small dragon-like creature with the same kind of wings that are inside where Blue Dragon is, but this one is green. Galarian, what you doing? Um, as far as we know, there's only these two things. You, are they your blue dragon wormlings? Uh, these appear to make an intelligence check. Uh... You've heard rumors of these things. You don't. You've never seen them, definitely. Um, but you know these as dragon fairies. But you've never. You've never seen one. You don't know anything about them. You've just heard of them. You never thought they were real. You said dragon fairies. Yep. Or, or fairy dragon. Dragon. Oh, okay. But um, you can see that there's a green one and a blue one. I think I'm going to walk up to here and the illusion a little bit. Okay. And, as and I think I'm going to use my breath weapon. Okay. Yeah, as you step up into the illusion, you can see. Um, do they have to make a strength save, or is it just a half movement when they're walking into your entanglement? It's only when it's cast, right? Yeah, it looks like it was only cast when it's cast. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so, so you start stepping on the vines, and as you approach this blue dragon, you start passing through, you can see that tangled in this mesh of vines is this small blue dragon, and he's struggling to free himself from it. Alright. I'm uh... I'm going to go ahead and use my breath weapon then. Yeah, go for it. So it's a 15 foot cone, so uh, Eldane should just be out of it. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, we'll just kind of canter it off. I'm not going to throw a spell sword for Dungeon Priest. So let's see. So it's a 12. con save. Yep, and that's a disadvantage, I believe, because he's restrained. So disadvantage. Dex. And there's an 11. Definitely doesn't make the save. So that's 9 points of cold damage. Okay. It only has disadvantage on dex saves. Right, this is a dex save. Oh, it's a constitution save. I apologize. I thought it was dex because it was breath. Uh, so let's do that again. Normal con save. 6. Still fits. <clears throat> so, you release your, your streaming streak of... Uh, 
cold energy blasting across and all the all the entangled vines all day and they start uh, crystallizing and forming as it overlaps and overtakes this this uh, fairy dragon and you watch as it just shrills out loudly and then starts to slowly freeze into ice as well you, uh, you killed it me um, I'm gonna step back out of the entangling you bet. vines Wait, he killed it, right? Like, right off? Right off. Oh, okay, so that makes it my turn? Uh, yes, that would be Talon's turn. Then. Uh, I'll look over the other one and cast Magic Missile. Okay. This guy real quick. And then you watch, uh, also I should have mentioned this, you watch as the illusionary dragon fades out. Uh, magic missile for nine damage. Yep, it's okay. three, right? It's three. Three. It's three d four plus three. Yeah. So each yeah. one of those is one d four. So. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll edit your sheet so this way you can just do it as a single click next time. Well, I get to target individually, so you do. rolling them all at once might be confusing. Yep. All right. So you definitely impact them, and you watch as this other one, uh, a little bit more mm, healthier and stronger than the previous one. Uh, it just gets pelted with these magical missiles. It's just hitting it all the sides, and it's extremely tiny. It's, it, you'd think it'd be harder to hit, but magic missiles popping them right in the sides, and he starts tumbling backwards into the cart that he's in. Still standing though. Uh, I'll just stay where I am. Alright, you got it. And, uh, and then you return back to the top of the order. Okay. Uh, Perry will just go up to it and then try and knock it out. Sure. So, uh, you're just trying to do non lethal damage? Yep. Alright. Hmm. 17 will definitely hit. Yeah, how do you want to do this? Um, so he's not trying to kill it, so he's just gonna like wrap it on top of the head just to, just to knock it out. It's okay, yeah, so, so you start yeah. charging up to it, and, and it's, it's, it's almost a sight to see, actually. Uh, something so small fighting something even smaller than himself, and you're almost starting to think, oh man, he's a real big bully. As Perry just kind of leaps up on top of the cart with his warhammer, and instead of, instead of swinging down the, the large sludge part of the warhammer, he just leaps up as if he's about to do a big uppercut to it and then just bops him with the pommel and you just watch this small little dragon he wasn't expecting a small little halfling charge him totally taken unaware and just knocked down on the ground and he's just slumped down unconscious Where's that poor little thing? Does that bring us out of initiative? It does Can I go over to the other one and check if it's actually dead? You may Is it dead? Make a medicine check at disadvantage because you do not know the uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Physiology. Biology, physiology. Thank you. Fifteen. You are looking at it, and there is blood coming out of the side of its mouth, and there you wait a few seconds, and it doesn't seem to be any rising or falling of the chest. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Perry will try and go over to it and cast Spare the Dying. Okay. Um, typically, for, for knowledge's sake, whenever a creature hits to zero, they become an object, not a creature. But mm. because, it's, because it's such a beautiful little guy, I'll let you do it. You can spare him from dying, if you wish. Yeah, Perry doesn't like things dying. No, I understand. That That's why I'm, I'm totally cool with that flavor of it. So yeah, <clears throat> um, a as you're over there, Talon taking a look at this creature, trying to see like what's going on with it. Y you watch as Perry kind of rushes over the other fairy dragon in his clutches, and he just taps it and casts Spare the Dying. And then th there's a moment where you're both staring at it, and then you watch as it starts <laughs> trying to catch its breath but it seems to be conscious, or unconscious, but breathing again. 
And then I'll kind of look over at Kalarian and, and be like, can you, can you convince them to leave? Find a new find a new target or find a new area to... Well, both of them are unconscious right now, right? Correct. Both of them are unconscious. Oh, okay. One is in Perry's hands. Should we try to bind them or something? I guess, yeah, well, that was my second thing, is to see, yeah. look around if there's any cages or something. Uh, make an investigation check for me. Make an investigation check for To look for rope? a cage. Or, I mean, if you have a rope, if you're going to tie rope on it. <laughs> I mean, I think we should all have 50 feet of rope on right, us. Right, right. Everyone has 50 feet of rope on them, I imagine. But are you trying to... It, it's a very small creature. This thing fits, like, in your palm. Oh, okay. Like, like this thing's super tiny. So I, I thought if you guys are trying to look for some sort of cage or some kind of makeshift way to kind of keep them in a box. I see. Um... Yeah, I'd say with an 11, um, you don't find an actual metal cage for animals per se, but you can makeshift one of the nearby crates that are there, you know, cut some holes into it, almost kind of like, you know, a makeshift cardboard box. So when you say these things didn't fit in the palm of her hand, like, whose palm? Like Perry's or oh, <laughs> bigger? Uh, not Perry's, more like Calarin's. Okay. Like, um, it's we're talking kitten size all right now i feel kind of bad <laughs> um so i would actually like to ask perry to hand me the one that i killed briefly <laughs> so be careful with it it's 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 stable but it's alive no worries i'm gonna i'm gonna cast lay of hands on it and just make sure I've got a firm but not, you know, crushing grip on it. Right, right. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you, you so, lay your hands on it for a point or two. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, You'll do one point. It, it definitely... The, so I, I imagine you would do it to where you can also kind of stuff it right into this box that you guys are keeping for it. So you, you watch as it comes to consciousness um, when you cast lay your hands on it and you kind of like set it into the box and close it real quick. And you, you can hear that He's now screaming and squealing, and, and he, he doesn't enjoy being in this box whatsoever. And he's looking at his companion that's next to him, laying there unconscious, and you can hear a loud shrilling, <laughs> as it's very upset. So, I know somebody else rolled for these things, but do I know anything about... Make a history check. Now that you guys... Um... Have... Yeah, now, now that you guys have had time to look at the situation, figure out what's going on, you can you know, definitely roll another check on it. Great roll. Um, <clears throat> I would say yes. Growing up, Ixon told you various different bedtime stories of magical creatures, and this was one of your favorites. Um, hearing about fairy dragons was always... It was always enthralling. Uh, it was always fun to listen to, especially because you knew how, you loved the fact how as they got older, their color changed, and you could tell that the green one is actually younger than the blue one. Um, as, be, as the green one gets older, it will phase to blue as well. You also know that because the stories were so funny that they are incredible tricksters. They love playing jokes on people, and normally, at the end of the day, they don't mean to cause anyone harm. That explains the no casualties, and okay, cool. Yeah. So I'll just tell the party or whatever. Yep. yep. You guys definitely get the sense that now it explains how there were various different creatures attacking these carts, and it did zero damage. Do I know if they're like? I mean, I guess they're smart. Do they? I assume they only speak draconic. Yes, that is correct. Um, can I, uh, cause, uh, you said the ropes to, like, the, the, the horses and stuff were cut, uh, uh -huh. it, can I kind of deduce that they, like, someone actually may have snuck up and cut them, or was it some, could have been something else? Um, take, taking the time to kind of look at them, especially as you can see now that it's a good thing that this is a actual wooden box and not a cardboard box the one that's currently conscious, the blue one, 
is trying to gnaw his way through one of the holes that you guys have poked in there for him and you're kind of having to keep like poking him in so he doesn't you know break it you, you gather that after anyone was out of the way these guys went back and started gnawing on the leathers to get these horses free I'd like to try to get the one that's trying to chew his way out to calm down. Sure. How would you like to try that? Just do you do anything, or you just want to just say, "Hey, calm speak down. to him." Sure. Go ahead and make an animal handling check. <clears throat> and we're doing this in Draconic, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. So it recognizes your voice because it was talking to you earlier it was talking through the image of the dragon and <clears throat> it, it's its voice is, is is high and it's it's shriller but you can hear the under the undertones and the gurgling of, of normal draconic voice and it says to you let us be free we were trapped already we want to be free I'm going to ask him why, what he means by he was trapped already. You, you get the sense as while you're talking to it, um, it's it's not the perfect Draconic. It's it's more of a, a base Draconic, and it's a little bit older in dialect for you. So a lot of the words are kind of, you know, you, you're kind of having a makeshift interpret as you're talking with this creature. But you get the sense that it's saying... Um, Last home was a cage. Not bad, not fun. We just want to be free. Brother and I left. I want to ask why they were robbing caravans. We love shiny. It's funny. And you a lot of it, you scared a lot of people. A little bit. What? Um, the, the, they scared a lot of people. They took things that weren't theirs. And then they go ahead and try to attack us as a servant of Tiamat. <laughs> uh, if I may, while well, this conversation is going on, mm -hmm. because yeah. I can't obviously understand them or anything, um, I'm going to mess with my goggles again and do uh, detect magic. Sure. Okay. Yep. You start spending the next 10 minutes ritual casting that. Um, in the meantime, while you're talking to him, uh, this this older blue dragon, um, he, he looks back at you a little a little puzzled. You, you see that he's not gnawing anymore now that you're just engaging him in conversation. Still not happy about being in the box, but he says, "We asked you to leave. We try to scare you. You don't leave. What else are we to do? We don't hurt anyone else. We just want to be free." Um, this whole time, I'm, I'm trying to translate back to the party course, as well. Of course, of course. Um, okay, yeah, if you're if you're messing back, I'm just really crazy. Just... Tell tell them to go. Tell them to go have fun elsewhere. Yeah, go somewhere to else. Fly fifty miles north or something. <laughs> or east. We, we were brought we were brought here to get rid of them. We the next people that will that come to be get rid of them might not be as nice. I have an idea. Uh, I'm gonna ask him like where uh, where are they from like are they, have they ever been south? Um, it's 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 strange actually um, thinking about it because you've been talking to them in Draconic, but this is the first time that you start seeing images in your head, and it, it's only working on you, and you're not sure why, but you're you're getting these these as if you were flying in a helicopter kind of overview landscape images it's basically images of them flying and you notice that they're taking you mentally up out of the canopy here and they are heading south along the sword coast the the ocean to the right mountains and and grasslands to the left and the image flashes again and you can see another forest a larger forest further to the south Do you have an idea what forest this is, or how far south they took me? Uh, I would say they 
probably took you maybe it, it's a lot of flashes it's hard to get a, a precise distance it's it's more like mental flashes of okay here's a forest so that this is where we are we travel the distance here's another forest you can try to make a history or an intelligence check for me to see if you can determine the location <clears throat> nope no okay it, it's it's really hard to t gauge where exactly they were talking about but you do gather that they flew south you're, you're smart enough to realize that well if the ocean's to the right they must have been flying south flying south to here or south of where you guys are yes right so I'm, I'm done so they flew up here from the south or they flew down here they from flew, the north they flew up here from the south okay They said that when they were captured, they were it wasn't fun, but it wasn't there was it wasn't bad, but it wasn't fun. Can they expand on that at all? Yeah. So you you start getting more visions of they weren't in cages. There's a lot of them, and they're all scattered in what you imagine is their home. There are various different colors: green and orange and yellow and blue and all various shades of these fairy dragons. And, and they're flying around, they're minding their own business. But then you also get these flashes of what appear to be elven humanoids in the forest as well. They're not causing them harm, but it also seems to be some kind of mixed, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a, a mixed party of people that share this forest and and now that he's realizing this dragon is realizing that he can convey easier telepathically with you you start getting emotions and these feelings of congestion and the need to spread their wings and and the desire to just have fun and be free too many people not enough fun so you got there too many people not enough what Fun. Okay. I think if we just have them fly away from here, it'll look like we did our job. Like, even if they go, like, I don't know. Like, we don't need to do anything to them. I would agree that, you know, I'm fine setting them free, but I kind of want to, you know, get across some of you know, the stealing that they're doing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because if they, you know, like, steal food from somebody who needs it, um, somebody who's, you know, because there's been war and you know damages and stuff, you know what they're stealing medical supplies that people are waiting for and such. So I try to instill upon them. They cannot continue doing stuff like this. Okay. Um, so yeah. So you convey that to them. Um, in the meantime, while um, Tizio is looking around, rummaging through, and and some of the other guys are looking through the, the stuff in the carts and the, and that are in the boxes. You don't pick up any magical auras from this equipment as you start popping open boxes. Not, nothing was locked. Um, it, it's, it's a smattering of different goods. Everything from baking supplies, breads that are now stale, um, crafting materials and components, um, tools, hardware, a couple basic you know, leather armors, a couple spears and swords some very nice looking jewelry um nothing too expensive but you know uh nice candelabras a couple nice gas lan uh, oil lanterns things of that nature um and then as you're trying to convey to them that it's not safe here it's it's not this is not a good place to call home they kind of look now that it, now that some time has passed you guys spend maybe 10 15 minutes doing this or so the other one starts to stir out of the box, and you, you can feel uh, Claire and this, this sigh of relief that his brother is not too badly injured, and he starts nuzzling him, and they start communicating amongst each other. A few minutes pass, and then they start looking through the box, and they say to you, Let us be free. We won't come here. Everybody else found that? 
I'd like to play that message. Yeah, if you transmitted to that to if you translated that to Perry, he'd be like, Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we need. Seems reasonable. Okay. And I'm gonna open up the box then and put him out. Okay. Um as as you open up the box they, they kinda they do that pause like is this a trick? Um, and then they look around for a minute and they look at you and you kind of give them this nod of approval and the blue one starts to flap his wings as the green one's still trying to stir and he, he looks like his shoulder's a little hurt. Um, it's, he's, he's having a hard time getting off. No I'll do a lay on hands on him then at one point. Okay, yep, and, and as you do, you kind of... He, he, he starts to recoil a little bit as you reach in with your finger to, to just gently touch him and he feels this warm radiating energy encompass him and he starts to stretch his wing back out as if he's like trying to pop up his shoulder blade back into place or something and he looks over to his brother and gives a little and he watches they both just start and they start coasting up and out of the canopy and off to the east <laughs> but yeah you guys uh, definitely managed to convince them to go find a home elsewhere where that may be you're not entirely certain so now we have to deal with all these carts of stuff <laughs> yeah it was, how are we gonna <laughs> so we got horses what are the chances that they have a detailed record of everything that was lost? Are you asking me or asking the party? Just asking. Like, I'm not asking for the DMs input. I'm just... I feel like there's a good chance that there's a detailed record of what was lost, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah, if they've got a guild for everything in the city, then I'm sure they've got a manifest or something that will uh, tell them what roll, was expected. Tizio, roll an uh, intelligence check for me. Give me a second here. No problem. That That's means it. we can't skim some gold off the top. Perry is not up for that, so definitely I do would not do that either. Don't do it in his site if you're going to do that. <laughs> and this is with advantage because you're it's a hometown for you. Nice roll. Um, so yeah, so, so Tizio would be able to chime in at this point and say um, that you guys are absolutely right. The, the guilds do typically keep a record log of expected goods that are imported or exported out of the town, and it's all registered with the um, each representative guild and, and archive in case of the need to redo an inventory or assess things like that, but Tizio also mentions um, that he has firsthand experience of seeing um, in events when cargo is lost and then recovered, not all cargo is always recovered. And sometimes they just have to cut their losses. Interesting. Okay. Thank uh, you for adding that because I was about to suggest that as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what I was kind of thinking. It's like I know you. So... I think we should, like, just... How, are these carts functional at all, or do I need to start making some discs? Um, I would say with some time, and because of the, the people that you have here, and because there's a bunch of material components here, you could make these carts functional, plus the two that Perry repaired last night. And, you know, it given enough time we'll say maybe like a day or two you could get them loaded up enough onto the horses that you have and drag them back to town with you it'll be a so, slow go and thing but you could do it are we gonna be able to get the carts out of the forest it kind of sounded like we couldn't because on the way in you said we couldn't even bring our horses Correct. so i was thinking we would need something more portable than cart make make a survival check for how the carts get in here then. Exactly. Okay, well maybe there's a big way out. I don't N know. Nice roll. Um, <clears throat> take, taking some time and looking around in the uh, northwestern portion of this clearing, you see that there is a bit of a wider path than the path that you guys had taken in. And 
with some time and looking around for a, a way, as you said, how did they get it here in the first place, you, you start noticing that there are trail trails of wagon wheels and tracks, but they led outside towards the uh, western side of the forest, and then we, you'd have to kind of skirt around. Okay. So it, it's possible. It just adds a little bit more time in the, into the run. And just by quick assessing of how much stuff is here, about how much would it weigh? In total, for all the equipment, it, with it being, I mean, e each cart was loaded by probably like one, a, a specific guild, an entire wagon load of uh, different types of material. Um, you're talking maybe a thousand or so pounds of material, raw materials. But I mean, um, it, it can be distributed throughout the carts in a way that you guys can pull them on horse. Say so if it's a thousand pounds, your discs, and then three carts, we could do it. Well, yes. And, and plus, now that you have the path and you saw where the path for the carts go, you can easily guide your horses down that path, hitch them to the carts, and then drag that stuff out. So you can. So I don't know. Or just for the sake of time, are we going to be able to say that we just do it? Yeah, I'm not going to make you do it. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't no. know if there were going to be, like, skill checks involved, if we needed to make a strategy you, or anything. You had just done the skill checks. That That's what checking for the path to get out. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that would be silly to make you guys do a whole thing. <laughs> but, um, Thank you for asking that, because I was already thinking about ways to speed that up. <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking I could spend 20 minutes casting discs and no, 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 move no. a lot of shit. With, with the combination of all of your efforts and time, you guys can easily get this stuff out back onto the road and heading back towards Waterdeep. Um, you'll end up spending another night on the road, but thankfully, you know, with a large horde of stuff and you guys all taking watch like you did the night before, it shouldn't be a problem to get back to town. But you'll end up back into Waterdeep on the South Gate probably later in the evening on uh, this will be day three for you guys. But so, as... Sorry. No, go ahead. As we're uh, working and stuff, will I have a... Is there, like, a chance for me to, like, maybe skim some gold or silver off of what um, we find? I mean, if you look through, there's no... There is no um, gold or silver pieces here, but if you wanted to skim a couple pieces of what you think would be stuff you can sell or trade in for gold, make an investigation check for me. Okay. I'm specifically looking for maybe like a pearl or some sort of something like that. Give me one second, guy. I'm sorry, say so that you're looking for pearls and stuff? Like maybe jewelry or a pearl, like, you know, the, okay. maybe a hundred um, gold pieces in value that could be used to cast Identify. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a as you're looking through, um, you do notice that there are a couple crates of uh, jewel crafting material. Um, one of those crates happened to have an individual, um, we'll say a, a white pearl, maybe about, um, about the size of your palm that has some good weight to it and, and you think it has a, a pretty decent value. You'd have to get it appraised, but you, you think the outlook looks promising with that investigation check. Cool. I'll just uh, so pocket we'll that when nobody's looking or something. Um, make a slight of hand check. Do passive perception or are we... Actually <laughs> this would be, I mean, if you're actively watching your, your guys go through it, but it would be passive perception less... It doesn't matter. I want to say, well... Perry definitely isn't watching. Well, so. I, I would imagine Perry at this point was helping Tizio and the others repair the carts to get this stuff out of here. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, anyone who was talking or, you know, we'll say maybe Eldane was trying to communicate with the animals, let them know, hey, we're going through the forest, you know, just leave us be. He would probably have seen Talon pocket something. But, Who based this um, on a passive perception kind of yeah, deal? Yeah, I think everyone's higher than four. <laughs> yeah, so I think I would have seen that too. Yeah. Um, but that is where we will leave it, as you guys have now uh, arrived back at the southern gate of Waterdeep, and then when we start our next session, that will pick up there so that you guys can collect your reward, gather information, and what have you. Our eight gold reward... Hey, hey, it's dragon marks, right? Or uh, they are called dragons. Eight dragons reward. Yep.
Hey. So, real quick, did, did he actually pocket that pearl? He did. Uh, Pretty much guys, everyone saw. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, y- you can mark off that you have one pearl worth 100 gold. Uh, if, if I may add, I, I, mean, I apologize. Uh, it's not going to add anything per se, but I just wanted to... I didn't want to cut anyone off at the time. Um, when the creatures were kind of flying off, or when we're about to to leave with all the goods. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna Tizio's gonna look back at the uh, the direction that they flew off to and just kind of s- say to himself, uh, "This adventuring stuff is gonna be harder than I thought." Okay. Are you saying that out loud? N- no, just kind of saying it to himself uh, before we leave. Uh, and just kind of have like a. a Kind of like a, de- a depressed ex- uh, uh, expression to himself, it's type thing. And as the last remnants of the carts get trailed out through this forest clearing before you make your way back to Waterdeep, Tizio stands there and looks up through the canopy as the skies are starting to get their familiar oranges and reds, and Tizio says that it's going to be harder than, than he thought. And um, that's where we will end it for tonight's session guys great job yeah nice DMing thank you yeah um so I do not have a set day for the next session on here especially since I'm still you know working out everyone's backstories and tying some stuff together but hopefully maybe we can do this again in two weeks yeah so was that pretty much the full one shot that you're yep, you had the other? You guys did the full one shot. Nice. Oh man, that would have lasted me like five sessions right there with my friends. <laughs> oh, I feel that same thing. It, I, I, one session I did with them, it took them almost three hours to fight a boss. I just, so that's what worries me about one shots is like one shots always for me seem to end like I take like I, a month long. Yeah. I, don't know. Well, I, I'm, I feel like we hit the mark right on time. Yeah, I did. I don't know when we started. Two hours of play. That was fun. Uh, we three. Started around yeah, three hours of play. Started. Oh yeah, we started at eight. My bad. Yep. But um, yeah, no, you guys all did great. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how many of you were gonna freak out about the dragon. I did initially. Yeah. <laughs> so from the beginning, when you were giving us the quest, I was like mm, illusions. But you know, hey. my initial thought that. was like, all right, this. All right, he's gonna go away any second now, and then I was like, "Oh, it's an illusion. Never mind." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was either like the dragon like takes off and completely ignores us, and there's something else here, or like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I thought we were playing like Dark Souls for a minute there. <laughs> there's gonna be a real time skill check. Get out your controller. We're playing reaction test. Parry, parry, parry. Parrying a dragon. Good luck. It was, uh, I, I thought it was. I thought it was a clever twist, especially since these uh, fairy dragons like trickery, and they're they're good-hearted in nature, so they're not trying to cause harm. They were just trying to scare you off, like they did everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny because like, it was very clear that they weren't doing any damage. Oh, <laughs> suggestion, leave. Yeah, exactly. Gas. Oh, you don't want to fight anymore. I mean, they have actual spells to hurt you with, but like I said, that. If, if they could get you to go away and leave them alone, that's all they wanted. Yep. Awesome stuff. All right, guys. Well, I will hit you all up on Discord, uh, and we'll try to coordinate another day. Uh, GG. Thank you for the session, sir. No, my pleasure. I love it. Can we have a notes channel in the Discord that we're not going to talk in, except for notes? Mm, I can make one. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Sure, I can make one. Uh, and just for notes as in, like, things that had happened, or... Yeah, just, like, notes I took during a session so everybody else can see them. Yeah. Because if they go in the main channel, they're just going to get buried. Yeah, like, I just posted in the main channel. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, uh, I will make a notes section. Or, you know what? I'll, I'll one-up you. Um, I will use Obsidian Portal and create places for you guys to put notes. Okay. Sound good? All good. All right. Yeah, sure. All right, have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, guys. Or have a good day.